All right, we're live. Hey, how's it going, YouTube Reverse? Uh, we're back with Mr. King Fowley, and we are going through episode number two of our Iron Maiden um, exploration. Alan King, hello. Hi. How are you guys doing tonight? Iron Maiden exploration. I feel like we're like <laughs> giving them all fucking colostomy bag fucking testing tonight. <laughs> we might be tonight. Let's tonight might Iron be the Maiden. night. Yeah. We go for we're a in a strange, bag tonight. I do, we're in a I do strange like land and they're exploring a exploring a brave new world. Part. A lot of people are gonna say, a lot of people think the later made this number two. <laughs> 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 Not me. Okay. Yeah, I'm in a goofy mood tonight, but what's what else is new? We're good. No, that's all oh, good. That's and good. um what the fuck? No, it's gonna be interesting tonight. I'm very uh very excited, uh, happy to be here, and I'm interested to see what everybody thinks of these albums. Cause yeah, we're kind of entering a new uh, very different phase of maiden history. You know, uh last week on Heavy Metallurgy, we saw, you know, a little band from the UK rise to global domination and only to have, you know, egos uh you know start to form cracks in the foundation as the music industry shifted, they suddenly found themselves without their lead singer without their producer and without, uh, you know, their signature artist. And so what will become of our heroes? Do they recapture the glory of the past or do they fade into obscurity as just another 80s band that uh, couldn't hack it in the 90s? Tonight, we'll find out on Heavy Metallurgy Part 2. <laughs> That's good stuff, man. You're good That's stuff. Nice. It's looking to make like the Super Bowl with halftime or something. <laughs> That's why they pay me to narrate every single episode of, uh, you know, those horrible, you know, crime scene 911 things. <laughs> <laughs> with Alan. He's been practicing all week for that. Tonight, who killed Eddie on a very special heavy metallurgy? Dun, dun, dun. <laughs> so, um, yeah, I mean, like, like Alan so poignantly stated, uh, big changes for Maiden. Um, King, where were you at with this when you heard? I mean, granted, back in this time, you were very much like all of us, probably balls deep in the death metal stuff. I mean, Deceased was pretty damn busy back then. And um, I mean, traditional metal has been on all of our radars forever. But uh, this this era is kind of a downtime for Maiden, pretty low for a lot of bands that were doing traditional metal as well, I think, with the uh, rise of brutal death metal and black metal and um, all things extreme. Um, where was your head when you heard the news that uh, Bruce had left Maiden? I was I was following Maiden, of course. You know, Maiden was still, I was always there, like I said before, with all the records and stuff and with Fear of the Dark and he didn't get to do the tour, as I mentioned last week and stuff. It just fell apart. And then you saw the thing on cable where Bruce was killed in the pay-per-view thing, which was which was so fucking cheap. Like I said last week, it was definitely a Jack Koshik production. Um, <laughs> when, when, when I, after that, I didn't know what they were going to do. And I kept speculating with other friends. Like people kept saying, Michael Kiske's coming in from Halloween. Michael Kiske's coming in because the high pitch singing. You're like somebody that sounds like mm -hmm. thinking someone would say Steve Grimmett from Grim Reaper. You'd hear a couple, just a couple high pitch things. I remember hearing uh, Doogie White too, who had sang for Rainbow on one of their the comeback records. There stuff. was rumors of Ralph Shapers too from yeah, Gamma yeah, Ray. Ralph Shapers, yep. yep, Primal Fear and stuff like that. And I and I basically was like, I don't know what's going to happen. But then I started reading the Metal Hammers and stuff, and they were kind of like talking about Blaze Bailey, and I was like, well, that's a weird choice because he he was, but you know, when he was when he was doing his thing. Before Maiden, it was very Van Halen ish, you know, like the stuff of the time with with, with uh, what he was doing. And I was just like thinking, what the hell are they going to do? Are they going to go for more of a Paul Diano, like you were saying last week, like a barroom brawler type of singer? Or are they going to keep this soaring thing? And I thought, man, there's no way they can't go without the soaring thing. There's just too much material when they play live. Yeah, it can't be done. Then it I was thinking, still the singer, this sound, and you know, I, with Steve, you just never knew. Even then, you could you knew Steve was playing it by his own thing, you know. But with Wolf Bane with uh, Blaze Bailey, which was a name that kept coming up, then I literally read somewhere that they they and I know this is just goofy part of it, but they said the reason he was the one was because he could play the fuck out of some soccer. <laughs> yeah, that was the that was the deciding vote, you know. And I was like, mm -hmm. holy moly, guacamole, you know. I was like, this is going to be crazy. So when the, then they announced Blaze Bailey, and that's kind of where I'm at as far as like you know. Then he came in the band. I was like, all right, let's see what's going to happen. And you know. I got to say, it, it's one thing, you know, obviously with Bruce, you know, we none of us were there. All you can do is guess and hear through hearsay, but they weren't getting along. Yeah. There was some conflicting ego shit going on and, you know, Blaze probably stepped in. They liked the guy. Like you said, he could play soccer. He was probably totally chill. 
And for for his part, I think Blaze did a pretty goddamn good job because he was outgunned in the vocal department. When it comes to trying to sing the Bruce stuff, he was completely outgunned. We you know with the siren type highs, and it really wasn't fair to Blaze to put him in that position. I mean, if they played a few shows a year, it'd be fine. I think he'd do it. But as much touring as they did, his voice it could not survive that day to day demand of uh, those well, old songs. Well, I can tell you, I can tell you this: I saw them on the X Factor tour, front row at Hammerjack's Bar, which is you know that's about a fifteen hundred seater in Baltimore, which is one of their oh. favorite bars. You know, it's on the Somewhere in Time artwork. Yep. And I'll tell you straight up, man, I was about this far from the fucking, the, the, the amps underneath the floor, which were pumping out because it was like the vocals were everywhere in that place because it wasn't an arena thing where they were sitting really high. They were low. And I can tell you this, this guy was singing his ass off. He sounded yep. fucking great. He was doing the evil that men do. He was singing really good, really, really good. But I knew in my heart when I heard the record before this that, I could tell this guy is limited. Now, my in my opinion, this is where I stand with Blaze Bailey's voice on in Maiden, especially the X Factor. First off, he had nowhere near the production that they gave Bruce Dickinson on all the Maiden records. I mean, no. they literally turned the reverbs mm -hmm. off, the stuff yep. that hides stuff. He's not he's not doubled and tripled a lot of parts where you think he should be. You know, you listen, if you can go back and single out, it's on YouTube for anybody that's watching now, you can go in there and see all these like soloed out stuff. You can hear how much, how busy those vocals are on the choruses of like, go and listen to Power Slave or Two Minutes to Midnight. It's, it's, it's layered. And they didn't give them that. They'd also, you know, with Martin Birch being gone, they went and, were, you know, getting with Kevin Shirley and getting into all this stuff, especially Steve Harris in the transitional uh, period here. They were learning there too. So just outside of the vocal production, the production as a band isn't all there. Okay. So that works against them. But when I heard the record, the first thing I thought of with his vocals, because I remembered him in Wolf Spain, I really thought David Lee Rothy. Okay. When I heard the record, the first thing that came to my mind was Messiah Marcola, Marcola from Candlemass. And I also heard a little bit of 8D Martini from Oz. I was like, man, it's, it's, it's good but it's limited. It's got its style. And I was like, man, there's just no fucking way when he goes to do these songs, like how would be that name? I knew it would be in every show they ever played, for example. Sure. There's just no way he's going to hit that stuff. I need to hear it. So I hadn't heard it yet, but with the record, I thought his vocals were fine. I had many friends that said, dude, he's flat. He's monotone. He's, he's flat. flat the board. I said, no, he's singing like most people would sing. He's just not produced. He's not True. produced at all. It's very, it's, it's demo like, you know, just a, baseline with that record. Now we all know another thing too, is they lost their major label for a lot of way too. You know, I know Alan, we, you know, they went to CMC international, which was a low key, yep. big key for underground stuff, but it was not where they were before. And I know they had money in their pocket and I'm sure they made things fly, but things were scaled down as far as that goes. And who the hell knows what exactly Steve was thinking in his mind when this came in, do I want to go a different route? Do I want to not, you know, push the production in a new route? I, I don't know. You know, that's that's kind of where I am without talking about the record yet. Sure. Mm -hmm. What do you think, Alan? Yeah, uh, I remember, yeah, there were you know, tons of rumors about, you know, who was going to be in there. I remember, you know, yeah, Kiska and, uh, you know, Ralph Shepard's names being thrown around. And I remember it seemed like it took a long time for them to make a decision. And they, you know, reportedly did go through, you know, tons and tons and tons of, you know, demos and auditions and such, uh, which I didn't think, you know, was necessarily a good sign. It's like, sure, you're trying to find the best vocalist, but it also seems like you're dragging your feet on it a little bit after a certain point. And yeah, you know, they got Blaze. I wasn't really familiar with any of his previous material at that time. So I was just like, okay, I don't know this guy, but we'll see what he sounds like. Um, I remember, yeah, some of the soccer things too, King. I, I remember that thinking like, you know, they may just be goofing around. I, I don't know. It's You're reading an interview. It's hard to know if they're, you know, trying to be tongue in cheek or what. But I do remember thinking, you know, you're one of the biggest heavy metal bands in the world. This is, you know, you're trying to replace one of the, the most iconic singers in the world. That's a weird fucking comment to make that you're, <laughs> that you're worried about the guy's, you know, football skills. When you're trying to, when you're taking this long to find, you know, the perfect replacement vocalist, that didn't, I remember that not sitting well with me. So like, maybe I shouldn't take that too seriously, but hmm, that may not be a good omen. I'm not sure. <laughs> um, 
but yeah, you know, in terms of, you know, yeah, lots of changes going on for the band at this time in terms of what was Steve Harris thinking. One thing he was thinking about was something very different, you know, around this time heading into X Factor, he was going through a divorce. Uh, you know, his headspace was, you know, very distracted with other goings on. So, yeah, it, it's a weird, you know, transitional time. And like you both have said, you know, uh, Blaze, he's not a bad singer. I don't mind his voice at all, but you're bringing him in, you know, to replace somebody that sings in a different style that's you know not in Blaze's range. And it also so happens to be, you know, arguably the most beloved front man in all of heavy metal history. You know, yeah. the guy is almost doomed, you know, to failure from the start. You, you know, this is going to be a tough mountain to climb no matter who they tap. And when they're tapping a guy with a different range and a different style, I, you know, because, you know, he knows how to handle a soccer ball, you are really setting him up. You know, for, I was going to ride my soccer ball, boy. <laughs> yeah. I, I really do remember that, the standing out. Well, it was. It even would come up, you know, in later interviews, you know, sure. even like into the virtual 11 era, you know, you'd read interviews and sometimes it seems like they wanted to talk soccer more than they wanted to talk about Iron Maiden records. And it was just, it was, yeah, it was... Iron Maiden overall was, you know, in a very weird headspace, you know, as we get into this era. So, yeah, you know, I was just like, I was certainly willing to give it a fair shake. Again, I had not heard the guys' other bands. So I was just like, well, sure, when it comes out, I'll buy it. I'll listen yeah. to it. And, yeah, you know, I'll, I'll sure. give it a shot. No, there's no reason not to. I was not one of these people that was just like, Bruce forever, everybody else never. So it's like, well, well, we'll see what they can do with it. I think, I think once you start meddling with uh, your, your singer, I mean, you get longtime fans that associate, you know, like Bruce. I mean, people associate Iron Maiden with Bruce Dickinson. I mean, I associate it with Diano as well, but it's a, a tough thing to recover from when you change your singer, unless you get a guy that's a copycat. I mean, there's a few bands that have done it, and it's usually the bands that have a long legacy of music behind them, uh, a lot of favorites that people have grown up with, like Halloween. Halloween have done it twice, three times. Uh, Maiden has done it twice and um, three times. <laughs> it just, it never, it never really, you know, and there was some growing pains, but I think as we get into this first album with Blaze, is, we're going to have King start off on this. It was weird, but I don't know. What do you, what, what did you think of X Factor King? Well, I, well just real quick to, to, to ride off the coattails, what you said real quick. I mean, there's people to this day that think Sabbath is not Sabbath when Dio joined. Okay, yeah. mm -hmm. so oh, the yeah. best of the best because you're talking one of the voices of metal. If he couldn't, you know, win everybody over in Sabbath, you, and of course you got the Brian Johnson, Bon Scott. You're just talking the biggest yep. of bands and yep. stuff. So there's always going to be people like that. But, but that with, with the Brian, with the Brian and uh, Bon Scott, that in a lot of ways was a lateral move because Brian Johnson had very much a um, he tried to mimic Bon. I yeah, think I mean, I think he's ways. a lot more rougher and scratchier and things like that. But what I was going to say is, I would, I would put. Brian Johnson, Bon Scott, more with with Blaze, uh, Bruce Dickinson, because Brian wasn't really known. Ronnie James Dio was not the world's biggest, most popular guy at the time, but he was well known from Rainbow and you know his past to that point. He was known. Mm -hmm. He'd been out there on the circuit. And yes, Blaze had Wolf Spain and Brian Johnson had Jordy. But Wolf Spain was pop more popular than Jordy, but just basically on a smaller scale. So I just I I, I bought the record. I fucking realized it was on CMC that they had been scaled down, at least in America. Everything was scaled down. I liked the album cover right out of the gate. I thought it was cool. I thought it was dark. And, you know, we all know this is the grungy 90s here and stuff, and things were dark. Yes. You get, you, well, yeah, you get that. You also get, that's, there's there's a few of those. There's the, the Eddie with the, the original with the Eddie. Closer. Seeing that in there. Oh, it's, this one? Like the Eddie sitting like in the electric yes. chair. That's what, yes, thing. yes, that's how it was. I don't know. They flip everything now, like last week when they changed the first Iron Maiden, and there's like two no prayers for the dying and blah blah blah. But yes, the the cover mm -hmm. with the Eddie in with the the Frankenstein. It's, fucking yeah, it's stuff. closer. Yeah. yeah, I don't know what I don't they know what version I have. Yeah, no worries. But I like the artwork, and I let the record go. It came on, and I guess this had definitely introduced us right off the bat to the 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 longer song Iron Maiden, which they were already hitting at before getting there little by little, but more so as they went. Sign of the Cross came on. I fucking loved it from the yeah. as soon as he came in and he started singing. I loved it. I fucking loved the tune. I loved the vibe of the song. It was fucking long. It's eleven minute tune. Opened yeah. up the record 
And that's where I get my Messiah Mark Cole. And I thought it was a very dark and doomy tune. It was very heavy metal. And I was like, man, this, this is working. This is working. I was like, now it's not a up tempo, you know, bop de bop Iron Maiden type of song to start this album. But man, it sounds fucking good. And I was totally into that. And then the next tune, which was, I think was was the first, well, Man on the Edge was the first single, but the second single, which I, I love, Lord of the Flies, man. Yeah. Lord of the Flies, I think is a fantastic tune. I thought it was simple. It had a very early 80s New Wave of British Heavy Metal vibe to it. Very cool. Uh, record goes on. You get Man on the Edge and stuff. Got that, you know, uh, that classic b- birthday presents fucking lyric that nobody can stand. You know, <laughs> the, the fucking uh, about the movie uh, falling down. And uh, mm-hmm. I like I, that. I like that song. Yeah, I like it. I don't love it. I like it. It was it was to me, it was a step down from the first two. And then as it went on, you got your you got into this kind of series of this middle speed Iron Maiden, which was more like dark and 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 despair. And we all know, again, that the grunge and stuff was there. I don't know if it affected Maiden in that way or if, like Alan said, with his divorce and things he was going through and losing Bruce and just being in a, in a weird headspace. Like that was part of it, too. But stuff like Fortunes of War. Um, look for the truth. These were all these were all good tunes. Now they they were like sixes out of tens. Those couple there in a row, like stuff like that in the aftermath. But then when I heard "Judgment of Heaven," which is my favorite track on the record, that was the beautiful melody Iron Maiden that I love the most about what I love about Iron Maiden. And I just thought the guy sang his heart out. I just thought it was beautiful. I thought the tune was good. I thought Nico was on. The back line was beautiful. Uh, Dave and Janet worked good together. I really liked it. And as it went on, you know, you got Blood on the World's Hand, another dark one. Was, and another thing about this record while I'm here, keyboards. A lot more, you know, tones of the of the synth, as we said last week, the keyboards. Yep. And, uh, you know, the rest of the way, The Edge of Darkness, you know, 9A, uh, what was it, one two a and I'm sorry, The Unbeliever. You know, there was extra tracks, bonus shit that I won't go so deep into. But as a whole, when I heard this record, I instantly really, really took to it. I repeatedly played it, and I fell in love with this record. And I really, really, really still stand by this record. As I told you last week, this is this is Steve Harris's second favorite Iron Maiden album behind Peace of Mind. Really? I'm like, yes, he really, really likes this record. And I like it, too, because it's, for me, I don't think it sounds like any other Maiden album as we go on or before it. I just think it's its own entity. It's a weird headspace and a dark place that I really, really enjoy. And... I, I really loved it. I saw the tour, as I said. I went and saw him at Hammerjack's front row. They were phenomenal. These tunes were played live. He sang the shit out of everything. Caught him early in the tour. They hadn't played 80 shows. And I knew that night, I was like, man, there's no fucking way he's going to continue to do this shit 30, <laughs> even 30 shows later. You know, and I didn't know if they'd scale back the tour or separate it in pieces or what they would do. But I knew another thing, too. They were also playing on these smaller capacity places, which never has, you know, everything you want, you need on the big stage where you have, you know, Obviously, they had anything they wanted on that level, but they weren't in America. They definitely were on a small scale. Sure. And I know they threw him into some very, very big gigs overseas. You know what I'm saying? And oh, yeah. I've got some bootleg concerts where he's he's hurting. He's, he's he's not awful, but he's definitely, you know, doesn't have a lot of oomph to him. You know, he's lost it. And, yeah. you, know, you know, you never know what it's going to be like until you do it. You know, we go out and if I, we, you know, we do tours like two weeks in a row, no days off. I'm 14 nights like that, you know, and I'm, I'm not a singer. I'm a screamer, whatever you want to call me with what I do. But you can feel it, man, no matter how hard you try not to. You try your best. So I give him that. I personally think with this record, as, as if I'm going to, when it comes to rating this one for me, I, I, I give this fucking record. I give it a fucking high eight, a high eight for me, almost a nine. It's knocking at the door for me. One or two songs could have been a little bit better, but man, when I heard this, I was pleasantly surprised. I had no idea what to expect. And I really appreciate the fact they did not go grab a high pitch singer and do the clone thing. You know, I, I kept saying Michael Kiske is a great singer, but man, we don't, we don't need that. It's because you're, that in a way to me would have been like, Stepping over the boundaries a little bit, I think, more so. I think you need to just move in a different direction for better or for worse, which we all know how this works out. But I, that's, I think, was what they wanted to do. And I think Steve was setting his ways to do what he wanted to do and didn't give a fuck. And I appreciate that. Yeah. Yeah. Trying something new is definitely a brave thing to do, especially when you've had such a long um, and um, highly loved run. <laughs> you know this is their this is their first down really i mean we know they've been slipping on fear and no prayer but this is like way way down they're not even in the small eight to ten thousand arenas now they're basically play, playing thousand seaters i mean i think they played the ritz or something in new york i think that's like 1200 i don't even know but it's very small yeah they played harpos in detroit there you go mm-hmm. i think i think it was harpos anybody in here from michigan confirm that but i think it was harpos 
But so, Alan, what do you think? Uh, let's see. Before I start, I uh, want to make sure I don't forget to say happy birthday to Preston out there, a uh, buddy of my wife's who's happy a regular birthday. watcher. He's just relocated to Germany. So, Preston, I uh, hope you and Evelyn are doing really well over there, that you're enjoying uh, Germany and getting settled in with things. So, happy birthday, buddy. Prost. So, with that taken care of, uh, yeah, you know, Kim's described this pretty well. You know, the key words you're always going to hear with X Factor is dark. It, the yep. cover art, you know, is darker in, you know, subject matter and darker in color palette. It's darker in art style. And yeah, very, you know, very reflective of this period in the mid nineties. Like King said, uh, the tone of the songs is darker. You know, Harris has said, you know, in later interviews that, yeah, you know, the, this, some of this darker tone and aura about things was definitely a reflection of his mood, uh, dealing with all of, you know, the life, issues going on at that point in time yeah the album came out you know it got very mixed reviews you know some people were kind of like yeah this isn't too bad this is pretty cool and other people were very down on it um yeah blaze does sound kind of flat on it but as king said too you know some of that is a production thing that's yeah. um, you know they, they were not doing him any favors you know in you know the sound room as they made this album you know, myself I, you know, got it. I'm pretty sure I got it around, let's see, this came out in October. I think I got it for Christmas that year, probably. And yeah, I played it a good amount. I did not instantly fall in love with it the way King did, but I kept coming back to it. You know, I played it a lot, got more and more familiar with it. And you know, the bottom line was that, like, you know, overall, yeah, it's a pretty good album. Yeah, I definitely thought... It was better than a lot of folks were giving it credit for. Um, weird little things. I mean, again, we've already documented. You know, Blaze had you know an uphill climb to sort of win folks over. While "Sign of the Cross" is a pretty cool song, I don't think starting the album with the eleven-minute track was a good decision. I don't think that was a good way to introduce a lot of folks you know, to the new singer. Um, because, like we talked about last week, a lot of times Iron Maiden albums start with a real banger. And so, again, there's expectations, whether they're fair or not. People are used to putting on an Iron Maiden album and having it kick off, you know, with something like, you know, Aces High, Two Minutes to Midnight, uh, you know, really strong songs. And starting out, making the people immediately, you know, kind of have to process through an 11 minute song with a new singer and a new darker kind of tone for them. Uh, I think a lot of people by the end of that track were just, you know, they'd already kind of made up their mind that, you know, this sucked and they didn't want anything to do with it. And it's all the new guy's fault, blah, 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 blah. I I really do wonder if they had you know put that track much later in the runtime and started with something like Man on the Edge. Like King, Man on the Edge is not my favorite track on the album. It's okay. It at least is a, you know, shorter, more up-tempo song. That might have been a better way to ease folks into this album. Um, so yeah, it's an album that I've always thought was a little bit underrated. I've been pleased to see that over the years, it has gotten more, you know, respect from fans when this came out. Yeah. You know, some people liked it. A lot of people did not more and more people these days seem to accept it and realize that, yeah, it really isn't that bad. It's a decent album overall. Uh, in terms of, a, and yeah, my take on the track list is kind of similar to King's. It gets, you know, a little samey feeling in the middle. There's a few tracks there that are just uh, a very, uh, yeah, a few in a row that are just so mid paced and stay there. They just kind yeah. of want to tone along. Yeah, the tempo just doesn't change for several tracks. And so you kind of, you kind of start to get a little bored with it. But yeah, then there's some better ones towards the end. Uh, and so, yeah, in terms of a rating, this one, I I would probably put it in that same kind of uh, seven, but you know maybe you know the bottom half of the seven. Uh, I'm kind of very close to probably where I'd put Fear of the Dark. Um, so I didn't think it, it was a you know improvement from the past album, but I didn't think it was a big step down from it either. So I give it that same kind of seven. If I'm talking letter grades, um, I'm always happy with like B minus on this. <coughs> album. Which, you know I like the album. I think it's a pretty good album. 
But I admit, you know, it has some flaws. It's, you know, it's got some you new know, rough parts here and there that could have uh, definitely could have been stronger. So, yeah, we'll call this kind of like a low 7 out of 10 and a B minus. And, but that still gets it a thumbs up at the end of the day. And, sure. and before Marty, you go, I just want to say another thing. It probably, again, su suffered from the CD length, too. It's running at 50, 53, 22. It could have probably settled in about 45, 44, 43 minutes. Cut two tracks that, of those ones we were talking about where it kind of went like mm -hmm. this. And I think it would have helped a little bit. I think it would have sharpened it up. I do yep. I do like the way that it started with the longer song. I thought it was a cool, different approach to it. And I do mm -hmm. like the album art. I saw my buddy Ryan was down there saying it looked like Claymation to him. I, yeah. I like that. I like a new direction because they had already been fucking with Eddie the last few records. You know, they, they were done mm -hmm. with Derek, Derek Riggs for the most part. They were yeah. done. They had a big falling out. You know, that's, oh, oh, I don't know the whole story. But I liked it. I thought it was neat for the time. I thought it was unique. Yeah. But, yeah. Okay. Yeah, I think having the having the long song start the album wasn't a bad decision in itself, but I think it was just a bad way to introduce a lot of folks to the new. Yeah, band. I get you. They, they were used to a certain way, and it wasn't that way. Yeah, yeah. that that's uh, g give them something short, fast, up tempo to kind of be like, okay, yeah, this new guy's not so bad, and build up to that longer. Yeah, yeah that'll be happening like the next four fucking albums. <laughs> yeah, yeah, they. Uh, yeah, I think they listened to you even when you weren't talking to them. They were listening to you. <laughs> <laughs> I guess so. Marty, what's your take on X Factor? Well, King brought up a good point that I think we're going to probably re revisit a lot throughout the course of the evening is um how Maiden um changed with the CD medium because it's pretty obvious that just about all of these albums moving forward they could have lost two or three songs. Let's be honest. If you cut if you trim the fat on um, pretty much all these albums, the albums I think stood to be a lot stronger. Um, X Factor is no um, exception, but it, it's not bad yet. I mean, 50 some minutes, eh, it's okay. But when I heard uh, this album initially when it came out, it, a friend had it, and I'm just, it, I'm just, it just didn't do anything for me. Again, it was dark, it, it didn't seem to have a good sway in dynamics. And, um, it wasn't until I saw the band in 2000 with Bruce uh, on the reunion tour. He They did two songs from the Blaze era. They did Sign of the Cross and um, fuck. Lord of the Flies. They did Lord of the Flies? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, they did Lord of the Flies too. And I'm listening to these songs. I'm like, God, these are good fucking songs. These are both really good songs. Why? Can I, just, can I bother you for one second just before sure. you go and say one thing? I never, ever to this day do not like when Bruce Dickinson sings any of this material. I do right. not like him better. He's a better singer, but he's not the singer for this material, in my opinion. Sign of the Cross has been played that whole last tour. He's out there with the big cross doing that stuff. I've seen him do Lord of the Flies. I've also, I think I've seen him do another song too. Klansman. Klansman's on the next one. Yeah, mm -hmm. but he they did it live. Yeah, that, uh, yeah, Michael yeah. Hudson from this in. record or the next one. I just it just sounds different to me. I, I you know it's 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 like when Dio did the Ozzy material. I don't want to you know I don't need to mm -hmm. hear him one fucking you yeah. know Iron Man. <laughs> it's kind yeah. of the same when Bruce did a lot of the Dino material. Exactly. exactly. He's not bad at it, but it, oh, it sounds a little weird. I agree with that too. But I heard I heard this album maybe once going into seeing um, Maiden with Bruce sing those songs. So I, I had no real connection with the Blaze era version. So hearing Bruce sing them, I'm like, you know, I, I need to revisit those two albums because I didn't own them yet. I said, you know, I'm going to buy them. And so I, I picked this up just from hearing Bruce do those songs and realizing they are good songs. And um, yeah, I mean, I think this album is quite good. This ring, this is a high seven for me. Um, the first three songs right out of the bat, I think are all great songs. I even like Man on the Edge. It's obviously. I think that's kind of geared more towards the hit single. <laughs> yeah, but, the radio um, song for sure, I would the say. The radio song, but it's catchy. Yeah. I like it. Um, it isn't really fair because Blaze has very little processing on his vocals, and he's very loud in the mix. So, I mean, it's... um. It's a very dry mix in general, too. Those guitars, dry mix. really, like somebody said earlier, yep. like it was the time of the Pantera Compressed Productions. Couldn't yep. agree more. Everything was like tight, and it was no, there was no breath in there. It was very, Absolutely. You know, yeah, hidden. But then they get to uh, Fortunes of War, which is incidentally the only song on this album that I'm really kind of not a fan of. And it's kind of, I like parts of it, but they start getting into this, um, uh, these lyrical passages, very repetitious. And that really starts to take shape a little bit more on the next album, but it bugs the crap out of me. But after that, the rest of the album, it, 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 like King said, it evens out, goes a little more mid pace and somber. 
I'm okay with that. I think the songs are all really good. This is, if you're on the fence about the Blazer and you don't circle back and put this up on Spotify, open, listen to it with an open mind. It's a pretty damn good album. I think not being able to hide behind um, effects and processes and all that crap vocally in the mix. I think blaze does a pretty damn good job. You know, he's got to have some confidence in the voice to step out like that. But um, you know, there's a couple occasions here and there where he strikes me as a bit pitchy. It gets a little bit worse on the next album. It's not bad. I don't know if it's just his style of singing. I don't know if it is a bit pitchy. I'm not a, a singer. It, I, I, I personally think that his voice isn't made for that much melody. I think yeah. he would do a lot better with ACDC sure. than he would. With, you know, there's a lot of melody mm-hmm. in here, and you have to have you know a good range for that. And he's basically he's got a very condensed range. I think that's what mm-hmm. it comes down to. But when it's in his pitch and all that stuff on there, it's very good. And that's why stuff like for me, Lord of the Flies, Sign of the Cross, really work. And if yep. you know, for guys, I said earlier, um, Judgment of Heaven is my favorite tune on the record. I think if people go and look on YouTube where he sang that in a church with his guitar player and a violinist, he sings it just on his own in a church thing over somewhere overseas. It is fucking hauntingly and it's beautiful. It is fucking strong as hell, you know, mm-hmm. because it fits his fucking voice. Sure. You know, that's what I, that's why I think what you're, you're, you're saying now, like with his voice, it, it, it's not that he's a bad singer. It's no. just, you know, you know, that's like, that's like trying to get fucking Ronnie James Dio to come sing the Iron Maiden. He can't do it either. Cause it's not his style. No. You know what mm-hmm. I'm saying? And it doesn't matter if you're good or bad. If it doesn't fit where it belongs, it just doesn't fit. I would imagine he would have been a lot more comfortable with the Deano era. Live. I agree. Makes sense. Yep. But, and, he did, you know. and he did that stuff. Good live. He would do some of that. Sweet. But yeah, that's my thoughts. I mean, I, this is, I'm glad I came around and bought these, both of these, uh, the, the, the album that comes after it too. Cause I never had it and it's cool, cool to have it and listen back. And the older I get, I'm a lot more forgiving than I was when this came out, would have been when this came out, but, um, I like it. I think it's a really good album. It's, it's kind of sad. It, it gets hard panned by so many longtime fans, but, but that leads us to virtual 11, this guy right here. Yep. Our 1998 release came out in March. What do you ah. think of this one on the Sanctuary Sanctuary Records label on mine, my copy anyway? If you look at that, can you yeah, can you straighten that album cover up one more time, Marty? The front, real quick. That is the fucking worst album cover in the history of fucking Iron Maiden. That is awful. <laughs> that is fucking awful, in my opinion. I don't give a fuck what. Nothing saves that cover. I do not like it. This record. I put on right from the start and did not like it. Did no. not fucking like it. The production was flat as shit. You could yep. tell that Blaze had done that tour and that his voice was roached. And now everything that he was decent was because he was preparing himself to join Iron Maiden. Now he's been in Iron Maiden. He's done the fucking one tour and he's still got black eyes from that fucking tour. And he goes in and he comes out with Future Real, what does nothing for me. And, and to say that it's the best song on the record, that you you know you're in trouble with my review. Angel and the Gambler. Oh. If I wanted to hear a fucking Who song, I'd have the fucking Who do it because it does not. <laughs> it's awful. And you want to talk about what you're going to get into with repetition? Oh. Don't you think I can save your life? My God Almighty! I, I'm not a suicidal kind of guy, man, but I came awful close. I'm about to swallow the poison on that motherfucker. <laughs> I was like, oh, and it's like, how long is that fucking thing? It's nine fifty fucking one. I put it Brother King, have some Kool Aid. Hey, you go. thank you, Jim. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking dude, and it doesn't get, never gets going. I mean, people love the Klansmen and stuff. Okay, as I said earlier, I've listened to every one of these records we're talking about today, from X Factor to the end today, today in their entirety, all the way through. This motherfucker here, I could barely do it. And I, Iron Maiden's my favorite band of all time. I could barely make it through. They, I mean, we're gonna, I'm gonna looking at the stuff right in front of me. Lightning strikes twice. Klansmen. When two yeah. worlds collide. Educated fool. Don't look in the eyes of the stranger. Fucking Kumos Astala Amagumos Amigos. Whatever the hell he says there, it's awful. It is bottom line bad. And I am. I hate to say that because I love Iron Maiden. I gave it every angle and looked at every way to enjoy it. And as a listener of Iron Maiden, everything before, I fucking support No Prayer for the Dying. I love Fear of the Dark. I love X Factor. The ones that people always call the weak ones. This is fucking weak. This is fucking weak. 
They had no tour in the United States for it. The fucking end was coming. It's it's they didn't fucking go back to the CD thing on this. It's 53 minutes and eight songs. You and fucking 10 of that is Angel and the fucking Gambler. <laughs> and lightning strikes twice. Oh, oh man, I, it, it, lightning struck more than fucking twice on that ball. Mm -hmm. <laughs> they sang it about 82 times, but anyway. 15 times in the first chorus. That's right. Yeah, you said that to me today and told me that. <laughs> <laughs> I, thought you, I thought you cut that a little short. Yeah, I did. But I got I got sick of typing it. Made in the lengthy songs, I'll explain something on why I think they do that. I'll, I won't name it now. This record's terrible, man. If this is the only record a person ever heard Iron Maiden, I'd say I'd say I understand why you don't like Iron Maiden because it's not very good. Even all the trickery and the, the masterness of Harris and Murray, the longtime Nico in the band and Gers and the two dual guitars, there's nothing to latch on to. I really just do not like this record. And to give it a three is being nice. It, it is being fucking nice. I just cannot get into it at all. And I was like, I see why there's no tour. This is bad. This sounds like it was fucking written in 12 minutes. <laughs> I mean, it, it, I see the man right here. Worst Maiden album by four. I couldn't agree more. It is it is the lowest in my thing. It is the lowest time in Maiden's career for me. And I was worried about them right there. I was very worried. Yep. Alan. Uh, okay. Well, I like this album even less than King does. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm about, um, say, I'm about to say, I'll be back. And then we'll come back. <laughs> <laughs> I got stuff to do. Bye. Yeah, see ya. <laughs> I'm done with you guys. There is no redeeming factor here. Um, the very title of the album makes no sense. Uh, why virtual 11 means nothing. Why all of a sudden are you insisting on putting the number of the album into the title when there's no way for it to fit with the X factor. It kind of fits because you just have to work in the X fair. It's your 10th album. We don't need to know this is your 11th album and it, the title doesn't make any sense. The cover art. It's not my least favorite Iron Maiden cover art, but it's probably second. It's probably one up from the one. bottom. I know which one's your worst. It's coming. Yeah. Oh, it, yeah. It's coming. Yeah, it's, it'll come. It, it's, Dude, the, the this fucking, that kid with that visor on looking through the soccer is just that 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 really did it. It's one thing to hire a singer because he likes to play soccer, but when this motherfucking kid's on here, Eddie in a soccer ball, <laughs> what the fuck? Yeah. So I, the title I, was. I, I, I mean, I don't even want to be that embarrassed, but I'm embarrassed for this record. I'm sorry. I'm yeah. The, the title is bad. The oh, yeah. artwork is bad. The uh, you know you yeah like you said, King. This is you. Know, the last time you they think they do an album that's under an hour and only eight songs, you get the feeling they just didn't have anything else. They had no ideas. You know, these songs have nothing going for them. It's probably a good thing they didn't try to write more material. Um, yeah, I'm looking at the track list now. You know, Future Real, it's nothing special, but I, it's okay. I'll give it a pass. It's at least kind of quick and there, to the point. At there's the your fast opener you were talking about getting back to. Yeah, yeah, exactly. It's at least a quick, you know, punchy number. Uh, it's nothing special, but it at least does the job. And then you get to the angel and the gambler, and you listen to the intro of that thing, and then they have those like little horns coming on doing the toot, toot, toot. And, and just like when King's done with the revolver, if there's a bullet left over, I'll pick it up and you, you, we'll just, you know, uh, both make the descents or the ascents together, King, because uh, that, that worst Iron Maiden song ever recorded. Uh, I've been yeah. listening to all this stuff again recently as we've you know uh, prepped for these shows. Worst Iron Maiden song by a country mile. <laughs> that song is hideous. And it was a freaking single off the album, which yeah. just to this day, I have no idea. I, I will never understand why they chose this you know, nine minute garbage fire. For you know what's even worse? I bought the single. <laughs> <laughs> Don't you think I had had some sense? <laughs> we, we, we all make some mistakes. Hey, I, I bought the fucking picture of this single limited to like 1100,000 million. I'm like, I gotta have this. <laughs> Fuck me. Where's that revolver? We all we all make mistakes. I what can I say? I, I'm, you have any money for the revolver after you bought that overseas <laughs> fucking picture? This bullshit. I, I, am not going, you got none. <laughs> I, I am not going to judge. Uh, what can we say? I guess you gambled and lost on this I one. Can't blow your brains out if you don't <laughs> got none. <laughs> That's good. But um, 
it's i mean yeah i i that song and again i'm i'm going to make a point not to be quite so hyperbolic tonight i think you know i went a little overboard on somewhere in time last time it i shouldn't have ranted about that one as much because it's not that bad an album at the end of the day but this one this one is very bad that song is horrible i can i played it all the way through you know re-listening to stuff you know ready getting ready for the show and I will never play that song again, ever. It is just hideous. And it doesn't get much better after that. You know, lightning strikes 56 <laughs> times inside of four and a half minutes for that next song. The Klansman is better, but the bar is pretty low at this point. Um, you know, then the rest of the songs are just, they're dull. Two Worlds Collide doesn't quite get there. What's, what's uh, the one song, and I don't have it, um, what's the one song near the end of the record where they actually almost, they go into a thrash speed beat on one part, it's just like a boogie. I don't remember. That's, goof, that's goof, goof. Was it no look the eyes there? of a stranger? It may be later. Yeah, in, I think it is that. It's goofy. Eyes of a stranger, shit. maybe. It's goofy yep. shit. <laughs> it's just all you know, weird. And you know, the last song, you know, you know, with yeah, you know, Como Estas Amigos, you get the sense, you know, it's meant to be kind of like, you know, the all right, you know, everybody, you know, kind of, yeah, you know, sing along in camaraderie. But it's so flat and so tired sounding that it actually comes across like sad, which just ends the album on, you know, even this downer note. And yes, you get, you know, it's very much a shout out, you know, to, you know, South American and, uh, you know, Latin American fans. Because those, you know, were where they were playing those big shows, King mentioned. They were still drawing huge, you know, they could go to Argentina and sell 60,000 tickets. It, they go to New was, York and they couldn't like, sell it was, like, it was like when Kiss left America and went to Brazil on the Unmasked tour and played yeah. to that because Maiden mm -hmm. knew over here there was just nothing. There was yeah. nothing. I, I remember I was supposed to interview Dave Murray at a show. They were supposed to play Nations in DC, which was another even smaller than Hammerjack's club, a little quiet thing. And like five days before the, the press called me, CMC said, they're not coming, dude. It's not going to happen. And then he said, well, look, I'm going to fucking still going to get you an interview. But it's going to be with Blaze Bailey. He's going to call you. And he never called me. And I called. I said, what's going on? I said, dude, man, I think he's already going to be out of the fucking band. So it wasn't that long into this thing where they they were just, they were talking about getting rid of him already. But go mm -hmm. ahead, Al. I'm sorry. Oh, no, no, that's fine. Yeah. I mean, you really, as soon as you heard this album, no, no matter who you were, where you were, as soon as you heard this album, you knew the writing wasn't just on the wall. They were already drawing up the papers. Uh, there was no way uh, another album could come out like this. The band was either done or changes would have to happen. And you got the sense the band knew it too. And uh, again, you know, I remember reading you know, an interview with them about the time it was coming out, probably right before it came out. I know Harris was one of them being interviewed. I don't know if it was Harris and Dave Murray or uh, or what. I, it's been, you know, geez, you know, pushing 30 years at this point. But again, even just, you know, and again, it's a printed interview. Sometimes, you know, it's hard to get, you know, the tone of things right. It just seemed like, again, they were much more interested in talking about things like in the UK, they were doing sort of a publicity thing for the release of the album with like a charity soccer match with like a lot of big name you know, players, Manchester United and all that kind of stuff. And it just seemed like the guys were so much more excited to talk about the soccer match. And then, you know, with questions about the album, it just seemed like they were very, you know, canned answers, very just, eh, Because they knew. They knew it was crap. They, they, they probably did. And just, cause, yeah, you could, they didn't want to talk about the album. They couldn't stop talking about their soccer match or flying to Argentina to, you know, play, you know, 200,000, you know, fans and stuff. And that's great. I'm glad they were still you know, able to draw well in other territories, but yeah, you, it, it was done. Doesn't make that record any better. <laughs> this goose. Yeah. And that's, a, that's the thing. They were all this other stuff. They, their mind was on all this other stuff. And you know, just almost like they were, you know, intentionally trying to avoid the big glaring problem that was about to hit record shelves. Yeah, I bought this album almost as soon as it came out. It's a placeholder. That's all it is. Yeah. A placeholder. Yep. It's a placeholder. It, it, yeah. They're just, it, this does, this album does not work. Uh, it's it just waiting does. for this, Alan. An F, a flat out F. Uh, I will give it one point. Uh, <laughs> I'll, I'll give it, I will give it a one uh, for because I don't think Future Real is the word. Future Real as an opener, I, okay. You, you at least got the right idea on your opening track and the rest of the album. I, I never really need to hear this again. This is a bad album. 
I did a video a while back on my. <laughs> yeah, I did an out. I did a you know video on my channel a while back. You know, just you know for fun. There was a tag going around of like you know ten albums that you think suck. This was the first one that came to mind that I included. I'm just like, okay, if I want to do this, uh, let's see, virtual eleven, and now I need to pick nine others. <laughs> yeah, and this, and this man's heard the second Jaguar album. <laughs> I, that one, yeah, that was. Uh, I didn't bother with that one because I figured almost nobody would ever heard it, so it didn't I make much sense so. to rant about it. <laughs> but uh, we have. <laughs> but yeah, that would be the bad too. But so yeah, okay. Well, Marty, what do you think of it? <laughs> I love it. I have a tattoo on my ass. <laughs> <laughs> Tramp stamp. I got the virtual eleven logo. <laughs> Tramp stamp. Yeah. You got your balls stamp. tattooed to look like soccer balls with Eddie. I got, right the, I got the kid on the right cheek looking into my asshole with his virtual <laughs> goggles. <laughs> There's on the dark web. <laughs> That's the dark web he's on, yeah. Um, well, this is an album from a band that is creatively and spiritually broken. Yeah. Let's be honest. They're broken. There has got to be you know, from their rise to power and riding the, the big arena tours of the world over, this had to be a, a bad bruise to the ego. It really did. Um, I give this album a two and it's for future real and the Klansman. You know, the only two songs I really care about on this album, future real there's part parts in it where blaze is pitchy. He's pitchy and it makes it a how little the hell off. do I like this album the best here now? Now I'm just there's a revolver, man. <laughs> it's pitchy, but those After two songs are okay. Number two. <laughs> Angel and the, the Gambler and Lightning Strikes Twice is the one two punch. I mean, those two songs had to go together. They had to go together <laughs> because they're the same like fucking right song. <laughs> it's it's the same fucking song with the same lyrics shuffled around, I think. I don't know, but there's no cool concepts on this album and they just were out of ideas. R repeat the chorus infinity. You know, it's just, it's lazy. It's fucking lazy. Bottom of the barrel songwriting. I the rest of the album, I, I, I listened to it yesterday and I was doing stuff. So, I mean, it, it, it didn't bother me as bad as the first time I heard it, but it's still bad. It is bad. It's a two. It's a two. And it's just for those two songs. The Klansman's the best song on the album. And that's not saying a lot. I like um, I like the verse. The verse has got a real good driving push to it. And the way Blaze fills in the, the holes on it, it's good. I mean, he, they, there's moments of that song that are really good. Um, it's just a, a band of it's It's just a version of it, their former greatness. It's just, it's piss poor. I mean, everybody's I already that's, that's sized it up. It piss poor. It's piss poor. Yeah, yeah. It's, a, it's a bad album. And, and if you're, and it, all three of us love Iron Maid, so for it to be this bad, yeah, you you have to. As I always said, if for someone you love, we'll get, we'll praise stuff for by the band we love so much. But you're you're you're, you're we're broken mentally from how bad this is because this is our fucking band, man. Yep. Yep. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yep. Yep. But I think, you know, that's a good point, too. I mean, we're willing to say it's a bad album. The, you, sometimes you get those fans that will just blindly adhere to anything and everything, you know, that their team or their band does. And it, no, if we don't like these, we're going to say we don't like them. And we do not like this album. No. But that brings us to the writing was on the wall with Mr. Bailey. <laughs> that that yeah. uh, wasn't going to happen again. So what happened, King? What happened? Blaze was out. And I yep. think Steve Harris spent all of his songwriting time thinking, how the fuck am I going to get Bruce Dickinson back into this fucking band? <laughs> how I much think, dick do I got to suck with Mr. Dickinson? And I, but I also think I also think he didn't have to take any of it because I think Bruce Dickinson was thinking the whole time, what yeah. the fuck can I do to get back there? Because it's fun to be a soloist and all, but he was playing jacks. He was playing fucking 400 seaters in fucking mm -hmm. America. And he was worried about what was going on. Now they had, the thing is when you get up there and we talked about this last week, when you start earning that money and these motherfuckers were multimillionaires. Okay. Sure. At mm -hmm. that time, they definitely had their mansions on the Hills and other places and they could escape anywhere they wanted. So it couldn't have been about the money. Now you have to use it. Is it ego or is it just the fact of staying on top? Because once you get up there, you want to stay there, you know, with, and, and Maiden never wanted to rock the boat. I know as Iron Maiden, I can't speak for Bruce Solo. He did what he did. He wanted to go out and I and hey, you can do whatever you want outside of the band. He wasn't like Rob Halford. Metal's dead. Fucking, I hate it. I'm done with it. I, you know that all that bullshit. He yeah. just said basically, look, I can't play heavy metal anymore right now. I don't have the fucking spirit. He didn't have the spirit from fucking somewhere in time 
on. I right. mean, as you know, he, as I said last week, he wanted that whole record to be acoustic. He wanted, he, so he was trying to get, he was, he was, he was in his Ian Anderson fucking mode. He wanted to do something different. It's Ian Anderson and his fucking Ian Gillen. And he wanted to go out and he did his, you know, his balls to Picasso and he put on his fucking sound garden cap and he did all that bullshit. And then, you know, he come around. And as we all, all know, he also was signed to the same label as Maiden and he did the accident of birth and he did the, the uh, chemical wedding and, got the Adrian Smith back with him and fucking Roy Z and all this. And they're fucking doing heavy metal again. Now for someone that left the bangs, they didn't want to play heavy metal. That includes Adrian Smith. Here mm -hmm. they are wanting to play fucking heavy metal again. Yeah. So it seemed like a natural fucking, you know, meet back up at a point. I'm sure yeah. they sat down as British pals and fucking drank their fucking Jaeger, you know, their fucking, their lager, I should say, and fucking started talking about it, you know, yeah. and, Money, of course, was, I'm sure, on the table. And I'm sure Bruce, as I've read going on, he put down some stuff. Hey, look, I don't want to come back and play what we've already done. Okay. Mm -hmm. I've heard this from Kevin Shirley. I've read I've read this from Steve. I've read it from Bruce. He didn't want to come back and just repeat what they've done. He didn't want to write the Fruit Trooper again. He didn't want to write Aces High. He didn't want to do that anymore. He'd done it. He'd done it many albums. Okay. So they had well, to shit, he even did it. He even did on the Chemical Wedding. Exactly. I mean, that's very much a Maiden album. It just is. I, I agree, but I think some of that is. I don't think that. I don't think the modern day guitar tone, and I don't think some of it's the Bruce Dickinson vocal that makes it that way yeah. too. But mm. I think there was a there was a good jump off point to get back to what they yeah. needed to do. Well, that song, The Tower. That that's a very much a Maiden song. I, agree on, I totally agree with you on that. Yeah. Yeah, and that, that's it's a good point to look at what was happening with Bruce at this time because you know right here while you know Maiden is really cratering back down to earth. You know, Bruce is hitting his stride in terms of popularity with his solo albums. Uh, Accident of Birth came out in 97, right in between X Factor and Virtual 11. You know, may, and it was very well received. You know, the, they've done a few solo albums before this, and they got very mixed reviews because he was trying a lot of different stuff. Yeah, he um, was doing, and I appreciate that. He was doing the Ian Gillen thing where he was doing yep. song to song, and it was different styles. Yep. Right. But yeah, 97, you know, he kind of zeroes back in on making a heavy metal album again with Accident of Birth. It goes over really well, get well received. And, you know, after, you know, X Factor had a lukewarm reception, Accident of Birth gets a big thumbs up for most folks. Right. You know, the disaster of Virtual Eleven happens, you know, in 98. And then in 98, Bruce puts out the chemical web. One gets a lot of critical acclaim. Folks really dug that album. So, yeah, you know, they're coming back together here, uh, looking to get the band back together. Bruce is coming at this from a point of strength. You know, he's been he's done quite well with these past two hours, so hooking back up with Adrian Smith and Roy Z and all that stuff. Maiden is crawling to the table. And, you know, so Bruce is in a position to leverage things here. I'm not saying he did. I, I, I'm not. No, I, I get what you're saying. He, he, definitely, he definitely wasn't like, you know, like begging to come back. Let's put it that way. No, no. He, he may have been very interested in coming back. Like you said, Ken, there's a lot of motivations here for why he'd want to get back with them. Those are really good points you made. But, you know, he can also say, like, if I'm going to come back this time, you're not going to take all my ideas and just kind of, you know, set them aside. If I'm coming back, it's. I'm going to have more of a say in this shit. And if not, okay, I can just keep doing really good solo albums and have right. a good career of it. Good luck finding a replacement for Blaze Bailey. He was, he was in a position of power to introduce Bring Your Daughter to the Slaughter Part 2. <laughs> <laughs> Bring Your Son on the Run. <laughs> but uh, well, and, and we all know that we all know that Rod Small Wallet was behind both camps still, too. You know what I'm saying? He was running both sure, Bruce sure. and Maiden, and he's yeah. always got his hand in the pot. And yeah. I bet you he just fucking said, look, motherfucker, you've done fucking four or five solo albums since you left, whatever it was, four, something like that. And you're back and, and Maiden, you look, this guy was the wrong fucking thing. Admitted, Steve, just admit mm -hmm. it, you know, and, yeah. you know, and then just touch because that's all it was. It wasn't Maiden versus fucking Bruce Dickinson. It was Bruce Dickinson versus Steve Harris. And we know Steve yes. is a Maiden, but what I'm yeah. saying and Rod Smallwood being with both camps, I think that was what helped them get that back made to the easy. And Maybe so, so yeah. and so, and all of us, you, me, and Marty, we uh, we fucking were waiting for this to happen. Everybody sure. could love those Bruce Dickens and solo albums, but they were like, "Why is he still singing this in Maiden? Yeah. Why do we have this guy who's monotone, scratchy? There, this doesn't sound like Maiden to me." Blah blah blah. Now you yeah. know you go deeper. Blah blah blah. It's fine because there's always going to be the same people that when Killers was done, they went to Number the Beast, said, "Well, wait a minute, this doesn't sound like Maiden that I grew up with." Okay. <laughs> We're, we're, we're old, but we're not that fucking old. You know, we weren't, yeah. we weren't right there when that happened, but we were right there when this happened. 
Yep. You know what I'm saying? Yep. The, the, the fucking Bruce to Blaze. And then you, then you never had Deano come back after Bruce, but you have fucking De Dickinson come back from Blaze. So yep. everybody was waiting for this fucking record, okay? And then there's a big fucking announcement. It was like fucking like the, the sighting of God. You know what I'm saying? People, <laughs> oh, my God, Bruce is back in Maiden. Oh, yeah, it was a big deal. And you're exactly right, King, as we move into this. It was very much, you know, Steve, you know, the speed bump that had to be. And he's admitted it in later interviews that, you know, he was he didn't come willingly to the negotiation table to the negotiations table for this. That at first he was not real big on the idea. And he admits like, you know, I, I had to kind of walk away for a while and process it and just get the fuck over myself and then go back in and shake hands. Look at my look at my bank account. And, say, and, oh, and, just, and just realize that, yeah, okay. I, I, my yeah, ex-wife took half my shit. <laughs> I just had two <laughs> terrible fucking tours. I didn't even tour the U.S. last year. Huh. Hi, yeah. Bruce. Yeah, but no, he's admitted he had to kind of step away from it and kind of be like, shit, don't fuck two this. Two big egos, up. two big fucking egos, and we yeah. know everybody else in Maidens doesn't have that ego. None of those mm -hmm. guys, they're all secondary, and they're they have their place. And without them, it's not Maiden. But that's the two egos. That's the two. That's the two fucking headed monster right there. Yeah. Right, yeah, you're right. You know, this this was you know epic news. You know, in you know the late you know 1999 that Bruce has come back, and it, you know because it was also kind of a new thing. Today, you, if you hear today that you know oh such and such band is getting back together, you barely bat an eye about it. Everybody and their kid sister's band has gotten back together at least twice in the past five to ten years. It's not a big thing. This was a big thing at that time. Let, know, let, having, let's, let's also say this before we get into the album heavy metal was coming back yeah yes heavy legit. metal the, i you know i could sit here for a fucking half an hour and i've done it many many times fucking bands like metallica and anthrax band you know I, they were already shitty to me by then anyway they didn't even sure. call themselves heavy metal anymore i can remember mm -hmm. fucking uh, Lars being on Howard Stern saying, "Oh, we're, we're not a heavy metal band. We're a rock and roll band." He goes, "But you got metal in the name of your band." And his his girlfriend was like, "Oh, he hates when people call him heavy metal now." Okay, mm -hmm. that was dead. That was dead in the water. I can remember yeah. Anthrax opening for Motorhead. Them fucking having rock and roll Anthrax gas station attendant shirts. Totally trying yep. to like milk that that time period. You know, Candle mm -hmm. Box or whatever the fuck that shit that was in and all that. But yep. now heavy metal was coming back. It had already been coming back in Europe. But as you but mm -hmm. as you said with the two Bruce solo albums those were heavy metal records mm -hmm. they were yeah. doing good so there's a resurgence so it's it not only is it important yeah. for maiden as a band it's important as a genre because they're the leaders of mm -hmm. the genre truthfully yeah, yeah right there and you're that's a great point king right there is you got like you know late 96 into 97 the band takes a lot of crap and a lot of it deservedly so but things like you know the success of things like hammerfall showing up on nuclear blast and making a big splash got a shitload of people thinking again about traditional heavy metal uh and getting that back on the radar and getting labels re you know interested in bringing bands like that to the forefront well, it, of the label the generation it hit the next generation of metal fans they're they're young they went mm -hmm. through the, the 90s very young and about 2000 they're starting to be teens i mean look, that, look at all the labels all the death metal labels even look at nuclear blast yep. sign in war halloween hammerfall yep. all that shit was over there you know what i'm saying all the all the sudden, yeah. bands that, i mean yep. when we when we tried to get on nuclear blast when we were going they were told us we were too heavy metal and that that was their object of was to kill heavy metal this is coming from mm -hmm. them when i when we were doing luck of the corpse so i knew how the, the owner over there was martin how he was and then all of a sudden here is all they're doing it all stradivarius and fucking i'm just laughing because i, I was like this is mm -hmm. the guy that said he hated this shit and sucked it was why he did the noise yep. label to begin with so what i'm getting at is it was a selling point century media had their bands metal blade metal blade bless their heart always had some of them already still in europe sure. but it was they were even mm -hmm. releasing them in america now you know at least bringing yep. some of those copies over to america very much so all right so then so, the, yeah, the band's back together and they make an album called brave new world uh, and, 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 and i'm gonna say and i'm gonna say this going into it they did not take it away. Did, when Adrian came back, they did not get rid of Janet Gers. They kept it as a three as a three guitar attack, which, which is cool. I fucking respect. Uh, yep. Son of a bitch. I totally yep. respect the fact that was something that probably Steve said. Look, he was here. A Adrian quit the band. When he quit the band, he wasn't happy. There was talk to him. He even talked that I've read interviews where he was thinking about just playing keyboards. 
you know, mm -hmm. for maiden and shit or something like that. And I was like, weird as shit, whatever. But I was thankful. A lot of people don't like Janik, whatever they think. He's a fantastic guitar player. He's an amazing yes. player. And Gillen and fucking White Spirit and all that stuff. I don't care if he dances on stage. Doesn't bother me. It's a move that Blackmore used to do to a degree to whatever. But he's in the band and they've come out with a new record. And what does it do for me? Not a hell of a lot. Not a hell of a lot. I first heard the, the Wicker Man came on. I immediately, when I played it, I was like, man, this, this fucking sounds like Running Wild from Judas Priest. <laughs> I was not blown away. I bought the record. I actually got it on vinyl and import from uh, Hellion Records in Germany, mailed it over to me. I played the whole record. I like some of it, but even to this day, it does not sit that well with me. I played it again today. And I was not blown away. I think that it's a step in the right direction, but I still feel there's parts of that virtual X one in there. Really? I still feel like, yes, I do. I I'll tell you this wicker man for me, generic opener. I feel like a future real, nothing special. It's got Bruce's vocals on it. Here we go. Okay. Now that's a fucking Adrian Steve Bruce song. So, you know, there you see what's going on. Ghost yeah. of the Navigator, I thought was a much improved tune. I love the melody on this tune. And I was like fucking very happy for this one. And I was enjoying it. Even, even at seven minutes, it was good. The title track, repetitive on the chorus, as we said, but not too much. Beautiful not bad. melodies. I'm thinking I'm on a roll here. I'm on a roll. Okay. We got past the sadly, not that good of an opening tune. Then it loses me, man. Blood Brothers, The Mercenary doesn't do much for me. Dream of Mirrors, I cannot stand. I think that sounds alternative. I only dream in black and white. I could see that on MTV uh, alternative. -y. I don't I don't like the way he sings it. Fallen Angel, eh, it's okay. It's throwaway. It's okay. Nomad, I do like. I think it's pretty cool for the most part. I like the drum pattern in that one. It's decent. Then you got what, for me, might be one of their worst songs. Out of the Silent Planet. I cannot stand this song. I think it's again sounds alternative. -y. I do not think it sounds like a total maiden attempt. Um, you know, that again, that's a, that's got, you know, that's Dickinson and Harris. You got a little bit of Gers in that one. And then the thin line between love and hate that closes the record doesn't do much for me as a closer. So we know we got the classic maiden back together. And I'm expecting this big thing, but at the end of the day, um 66 point, 66 57, 67 minute album. I'd have been happier with it about 40 and I'd have sure. been able to deal with it. It's too long. Some of the songs are definitely too long. Um, there's a lot of passages of music that work, but they don't work as arrangements within the songs. They sort of break up and it's almost like, well, this is a great riff, but not in the, the coax of this song for me. Went and saw the tour. Thought they were fucking phenomenal. Yep. Saw them with, who also came back to metal, Halford. Didn't care for him. Still don't. But uh, Queensryche was out there. I didn't I see Ryan. Yeah, yeah, it's underwhelming to him too. I just that's exactly that's a good word, Ryan. Underwhelming. I just I wanted to love it. I was ready to love it. I just didn't love it. Um, I thought about this you know all day long. Um, it's definitely better than Virtual X One by a long shot, but it, as as a classic maiden record. Dude, the dump I took today was better than Virtual X One. Yeah. It was pretty sweet. <laughs> True. <laughs> I'm gonna I'm gonna say a five. I'm gonna say a five on this one. Um and that's that's and it's a low five. And I listened to it today, and I, and I love I when it ah oh, brave new world when it gets going, it's beautiful. Ghost mm -hmm. of the Navigator, those parts are great. It's almost like I said with Number of the Beast, but but the but the lesser on that is nowhere the lesser on this. Um, or some of it's very very good, but then some of it's very very bad. Which like, here we are back to the donkey balls. Remember the donkey <laughs> balls last week? Yep. <laughs> How can you forget the donkey balls? Yep. <laughs> so it's like that for me. Now, a lot of people say Brave New World is one of the best Maiden albums. It's the only album since Bruce came back they can stomach to each their own. Hey, more power to you. I tried like hell then. I tried like hell today to see if it got any better. It sits at a five for me. It sits at a five. Okay. Alan. All right. Uh, you know, I remember going into this album, I was very careful to temper my expectations. I mean, obviously, you know, was really interested to see what the band was going to sound like with people were really wondering what the three guitar approach was going to be like. Again, today, that doesn't really phase people as much. You've had a couple of other bands, you know, do similar things. Yeah, at the time, it's just kind of like, what? you're keeping all three. Um, 
You, know, <laughs> you sound uh, like the guy when you did that. You sound like the guy in Jaws just now. <laughs> the tiger shark. A oh, what? <laughs> there you go. Thank you. But um, yeah, you know, and obviously, you know, Bruce is a great singer. But yeah, you're. I, I was. I went into it pretty cautiously. I did not run out and buy the album immediately as it when it came out. It's like I will get it, but um, I don't need to be there on day one. I gonna. I'll pick it up in due time. Um, I didn't want to build it up too big in my head because there was room where this wasn't going to work based on you know Maiden's misfires and the personal problems they'd had in the past. It, this this was not a surefire you know slam dunk kind of thing. And, you know, like King said, you know there are folks that don't dig it. Um, overall, though, I do like this album. Um, I don't rank it as highly as some folks do, but I think, if nothing else, it did what it needed to do. You know, the first thing is the tone of the album is very good. Overall, it's a pretty bright album. It's more upbeat in terms of emotion. It's pulling the band kind of out of those sort of darker, drearier sounds. Now, again, that worked pretty good on X Factor, but it fell really flat on Vir Virtual Eleven. It's not even that dark sounding. It's just kind of flat and sounding. It, this album sounds more lively it's you know the band or you know, getting some energy getting some life breathed back into the beast wicker man is not my favorite song either but it does it, it's a good upbeat number if right away it kind of tells you the band is energetic again they're having some fun with this again you know it's uh you know the best opening track they've had, you, know, you had to go back to what? Uh, be Quick or Be Dead from Fear of the Dark. I like Sign of the Cross, but in that style, sure, Be Quick or Be Dead. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so uh, you know, it, it gets the job done. It gets the album off on the right foot. And overall, I kind of agree with King's take. You know, Ghost of Navigator, very cool song. Brave New World, really I good that song. That Ghost of Navigator, that bass is beautiful. One thing before you go into your stuff, the snare cool. on this record is fucking terrible. It's yeah. way tuned too fucking high, and it sounds out of pitch with the rest of the record. It's ping, ping, while everything hmm. else is boom, boom. It sounds funny. Go ahead. Okay. Sorry. But yeah, but uh, but no, you know, King, you're King uh, I agree with you. You get more into the middle of the album, and you hit some songs that are, you know, could have been B-sides, that could have been, you know, edited out. Um, there's nothing that I hate, but there are ones that it's just like, eh. There's a few songs that you know, I can easily skip over in the track list. You have some better ones at the end. Now, uh, I don't mind Out of the Silent Planet. It does have that repetition problem. That it just sounds alternative to me. It doesn't sound like Iron Maiden. It sounds like something left from a Bruce Solo record. One of the earlier ones, maybe something that would have been on... Um, mm -hmm. the, the, the What was the fucking... Uh, fuck, I can't think of it right now. The, the, the third Skunk one. Skunk Works? Skunk Works, thank you. Okay. Yeah, that yeah. One. It's just out of the silent planet, we whatever. I, uh, and then again, I bought the fucking single. Man. <laughs> <laughs> you, didn't, you didn't learn from Angel and the yeah, Gambler. I, 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 mean, that Iron Maiden, I want to support them, man. I, I, yeah, I, yeah. And the motherfuckers shit that tune out. I, I hate that song. But then I realized well, Full King favorite. once, shame on Steve Harris. Full King twice. Uh, th this one's on you. <laughs> yeah, it is on me. <laughs> but uh, Eddie, Eddie's going to shit on me virtually. <laughs> <laughs> But no, I, I don't mind that song, but it does show the band, you know, is le sometimes, you know, they're more and more often starting to lean on that repetition too much. And when you go back through, you know, Iron Man's whole history, they've always done that. You know, how many times, you know, do they say, you know, Tail Gunner? How many times do they say Ace is High in those songs? But those were shorter songs. And so the whole thing's kind of over and done with before it feels like it's getting run in the ground. Here they're trending towards more longer songs, and, and so and, that and, repetition and, really starts to hammer you over the less head. Less aggressive songs too. When they're going faster, I used to say it doesn't sound as bad. It's moving. When That's it's, a good point. You yeah. Slow down. You're already slowed down, and you're like telling you know, come on, horsey, go. Ba -ba. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Lightning, strike this horse again, and uh, get it moving. Twice. Yeah, and just uh, yeah, I actually stopped and counted because this was something I knew was going to come up tonight. Um, yeah, Brave New World, you know, there's 10 tracks, four of them exceed the seven minute mark. And that's the first time that had ever happened on an Iron Maiden album. They'd never had an earlier album where more than three songs went above seven minutes. And so this one, you're up to 40% of the tracks getting into that longer form range. So that is a thing uh, to keep in mind. 
so yeah, I, you know, I think the album starts you know quite good. Uh, I like some of the tracks, you know, towards the end of it as well. The middle could have used some pruning, but overall, I do like the album. Um, it shows a proof of concept that they all could get back together, they could work together, and they could make something that really did sound like a pretty solid Iron Maiden album. It, does it recapture all the glory? You know, from the you old know, Power Slave and Peace of Mind era. No, of course not. Uh, you know, you're 15 years removed from those albums at this stage. But it does show that this, uh, yeah, they they can get back together, write some good material, and have it sound like you know an album that you don't you know there will be songs you don't mind cranking up and feel like yeah this is an Iron Maiden now. I'm not like wow this album is dark or wow this album is just bad. Um, so to me, it was, you know, a success in that manner. It may not, you know, be their strongest era ever, but it got the job done. In terms of a rating, uh, I'm pretty happy putting this one in like a B, and that would put it, you know, probably like, you know, a comfortable 7 out of 10. 7.6-ish? Um, seven, 7, maybe uh, maybe 7.5 if we okay. want to get into the decimals again. But yeah, a, a pretty comfortable 7, a B kind of album. It's a good album. What's a, what's a decimal? <laughs> I thought we were talking yeah. decimals, not decimals. I can't, I can't <laughs> fucking spell that. <laughs> yeah, you know, these are the kinds of albums that, you know, I'll give it a thumbs up. It's not going to come off the shelf and get a ton of replays over the years, but I, I don't mind holding on to a copy of it. And, you know, when I take it out and play it, but yeah, it's still pretty solid. I can, I can listen to it. I did today. I just don't want to hear Silent Planet. I, fair enough. If that one doesn't work for you, I'll, I'll listen to Silent Planet and uh, you can skip it. Okay. There you go. Okay, Marty, your turn. Well, I drank the Kool-Aid on this album, big time. Okay. And I guess I was just ready for this union to return. I really enjoyed the two Bruce solo albums leading up to it. Um, yeah, I saw them on this tour. It's the only time I ever saw them. I thought The Wicker Man, I saw it on MTV. And super catchy. Is it a great song? It is not. But it's a catchy song. It's a good song. The chorus sticks in your head. Um, Ghost of Navigator, great. Brave New World, great. I even like Blood Brothers. I think that's a really good. I mean, that's that okay. A, that's when they're starting to get that European, you know, kind of vibe that we know is coming with more albums. You could tell, yeah. you know, they got the oh, you got to have the metal unity song. Two hundred thousand you know, singing strongly. Exactly, mm -hmm. and um, you know, you got the Mercenary, Dream of Mirrors. I like that song. I like how they ended on a more um somber note with the thin line between love and hate i don't know if it's necessarily a straight up maiden song but i do like the song i like the silent planet song there's you know there's great harmonies throughout this album there's some good songwriting on this album which has been kind of lost um but the thing that always disappointed me i was like oh three guitar players cool but they really don't do a whole hell of a lot with it they don't use it to the best effect i don't think um it's cool it's it's all right um the thing that from this point on my complaint every single time is going to be kevin shirley the um the seventh member of iron maiden at this point i am not a fan of his production he is basically maiden's yes man at this point they went through yeah, yeah, i agree with that i agree with that but I, i'm gonna be i'm a little different than you i think it's gonna it's gonna He's he's inconsistent. What I'm going to say, going yeah. from where he starts now, well, even before to going forward, he's inconsistent. You he know, doesn't they, have a Martin Birch where you can you can no. feel you know the personality to him. I get what you're saying. There, it still sounds like Maiden. You know, Maiden says we're just going in. We're going to be live. Or, you know, it's going to you're going to capture us in our element, being live. And man, I'm sorry, but Birch set something in stone. The the Maiden sound is yes. not grabbing your ass and going for it. It just isn't. It's perfection. It's repetition. It's more of a drier sound. It isn't a big roomy amp sound. It isn't, it isn't that this isn't, that's not what Iron Maiden is to me. It, this is a dry sounding band. And for reason, I mean, there's, you know, progressive elements, there's some technicality. There's a lot of shit going on, especially you add another guitar player. Um, Nico, great drummer. Don't get me wrong here. Cause I, I can't, I can play funky white boy. I can play D beat on a drum kit. That's it. So I, I have a lot of respect for people that can play drums, but Nico starts relying on two fill patterns that he sticks with for the rest of his career. And it drives me fucking crazy. I don't but know. I thought, like, I thought on this one, I really did think on this one that the fucking, uh, 
the Nomad tune was a was a was a nice departure for sure. him on that one. That, that one's different, but I agree with you. He's starting to simplify for sure. Yeah, he's got that. But I think another Typical. thing, you know, when you're so, talking about the dry sound, uh, you know, just the just the, the live sound. I remember Steve on No Prayer for the Dying. He was so happy with that sound. He said, going forward, this is how it's going to be. It's not going to be overproduced anymore, you know. And that was still with Birch, you know, oh, at, yep. at the moment. It was they wanted to go for that live sound. And I and I agree here. They would literally set the amps up and just play live, try yep. to record as much as, as they could as they went along. You know what I'm saying? They didn't go for big production on the vocals. And somebody was saying here earlier in the messages, the drum sound, the drum sound on this record is awful. It's garbage. Compared to what's going on. The, if you if you if you click them in with the fucking the bass and the guitars, they sound like they like it was it was flown in. You know, it's 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 not good. The vocals aren't the vocals are pretty decently recorded here. I, he definitely goes back to um he tries to bring back his classic uh, Bruce singing more so than the last few he did before when he left the band. He's not as broken up inside, but he also he's layered in there, which is something that as you go on, you're going to see Bruce isn't as layered. Even when we get to the point where he's, you know, had his cancer and all that stuff there, we'll get to that in a minute. But sure. the production for sure is is odd. And I agree with you. Martin Birch is very missed. Yeah, he's very missed. But I would say. I'm of the mindset that this is what Maiden need to do at this point. 2000, yeah. they're trying to right some of the wrongs that have been going on before this album. It's been it's been a long time coming. Um, this is a good album. I'm I'm high set. I'm probably seven point eight on this. And um, while you're holding it up one more time, I do not like the artwork. I do not like the name of the album either. Sticks had just done the same album title. Oh and, really? Yeah. And it just uh -huh. it just seemed like coming back like that's the best you can come up with. I mean, you were you were much clever before in the past and that but whatever i mean i again i don't care what you know that that you know that that beatles white album there was nothing on that goddamn cover you know what i'm saying if the music had been there i don't give a fuck what was on my my donkey balls could have been on there man i wouldn't have cared <laughs> but i i really thought that that was a cheap cover to me yeah i mean yeah i mean this was a mission statement i think and yeah. moving forward um We'll see what happens, but also in the same era, we've got, I wanted to bring this up to um, Iron Maiden's Rock and Rio. I mean, Maiden is known for a million fucking live albums. It just right. is. Um, this is a pretty cool set list. The band sounds great. I will say I bought the Blu-ray for this or the DVD. It is the most seizure inducing edits you've ever seen that's, on that's any Steve Harris is doing dude it you can't even watch it as soon as they get on somebody it flicks <laughs> yeah. off I mean it's like hmm. it's seizure inducing I can't that's... I watched it once I'm like I will never watch that fucking like thing again. cocaine at 17 <laughs> yeah so but I mean still listen to it it's still a good set but, you know but, okay but here here's what I'm, right why you're talking about that Marty there's where you can hear the three guitar attack right there. When they play live, I can hear things. How will be thy name? I hear things that were never there as the two guitar attack before when they play it live more so than when they're writing new material. I hear, sure. I can hear some nice, good moments on that, especially when they were starting to do that stuff. Cause that was obviously when they were trying to say, Hey, we got three guitars now. And they were, they were, they were covering things that in the studio they could do before. And I know that from deceased when we have parts that are three parts, for example, our song "The Kept On" as we travel on, we we tried to play it live. It don't sound good with two guitars, but it don't sound the same. At least, yeah. so we, you know, it needs its three. And I hear it on like "Hallowed Be Thy Name." I hear what they dubbed in as extras on the record on sure. that record. There, I I really like the sound of that record. It's better sounding than their fucking studio album. <laughs> and can you imagine stepping out on a stage and you're basically standing in front of a whole continent full of people? <laughs> <laughs> and that's why, but that's why Blood Brothers is performed. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yep. So yeah. That's that. And what's next? Um, if anybody Alan's, has, it's Alan's favorite album art of all times coming yep. next. Yep. yep. In Dance Dude, of Death. Now Dance I don't know what's what's next. I don't know if that Dude. was somebody who won a contest. I don't know. If that was, <laughs> <laughs> I don't fucking know, man. I'm looking at that thing right now. That's fucking bad, man. Yeah. And, and also another thing too, I want to mention is the Iron Maiden logo seems to be getting cheaperly put on the record as they go along too. Yes. It doesn't seem as important. It seems like someone's just like, "Hey, man, go over there in that fucking in that paint there on that fucking computer and just put something together for us." Okay, that'll do. And Dance of Death, come on, man, that's not a very good title either, in my opinion. No. It's just it's just generic, you know. It's just becoming generic. But okay, that aside, I fucking much prefer this record. To brave I do too. I like. This I think a it's lot. way better, and I think it would have been a lot better fucking received had they had a better album cover art to it. I know that mm -hmm. sounds fucking materialistic, but that's the fucking truth. This fucking record comes on wildest dreams. I think it's a fantastic fucking lead off track. I think it's really good, really catchy. I mean, I like 
I like almost all this fucking record. I listened today. I was like surprised how many songs in a row I really fucking dug. I mean, you know, you just get into all these tunes. Rainmaker, No More Lies, even though that's repetitive a little bit. I don't mind it as much because I like what they're repetitive about. The I songs don't over say they're welcome. Yeah, Gates of nice. Tomorrow didn't do it for me. I'm just going to say the two that didn't really do it for me was that and Face in the Sand didn't do a lot for mm -hmm. me. The title track is decent. It's not my favorite. One that I really want to talk about that I really like, but it, but it's totally is a is a in my thing a grab from is Journeyman. It's definitely a grab from Dust in the Wind from Kansas. It's mm -hmm. very much that melody. I uh, mean, it's, it's it's very much that melody, and, yeah. I, and, and it's it's crazy how much it goes back to that. I never um, thought of that. That's yeah. Yeah, it definitely does. You know, but this record, I like the sound better. The snare is pitched down. I think it sounds better. I think the guitars are more together. I think this is a more truthfully. I think this is a more heavy metal record than the one before. I mean, I think it's a little bit more raw when it needs to be. And I do like Kevin, his production's better on this one. I think so. Now this is 68 minutes and I didn't feel like this album was 68 minutes. I mean, I still think it could have done without three songs, but it didn't feel like a long 68 minutes. It felt like it a flowed. short 68 minutes. Yeah. I really, really like this fucking album, man. I fucking really thought they, they were getting better. It was a step in the right direction. I felt like Steve told him, okay, look, dude, I'm not going to, if I'm going to have to listen to what you want to do, Bruce, it ain't going to be your fucking alternative skunk works bullshit out of the silent planet stuff. If you want to get some more Jethro Tully kind of like oddly, you know, odd clicky dicky kind of stuff, then let's go with that because Bruce does try to, he does stretch his voice in some awkward ways with this record. And I like it. I think he sounds very strong. I really do think this is one of Kevin Shirley's best productions, you know, his up and down flaws. And, I mean, Passion Dale. I fucking really like that. That's cool. Great song. Like, what a great a good song. guitar. Fucking, there's the. Mm -hmm. It's good playing in that shit, man. Yeah. I think the leads on this record are above average. As yep. much as I love Iron Maiden, I'll be honest, man. I've never been a big Iron Maiden leads guy on for any of them. There's some like that them. are classic and legendary, and there's some that are cool. But I just when someone says who is your favorite guitar players, I don't even think Dave Murray or Adrian or Janik. I just never have. You know, it's the same thing with Priest. I just never have. You know, if they go to dual guitar players, I start bringing it up, and then I'm thinking more rhythms. You know what I'm saying? But I really, really like this record. I, I I, I was surprised how much, I mean, I remember liking it a lot, but I really sat down today and I was enjoying the hell out of it. Yep. I think it's very emotional, emotional in there. It is. And um, I'm, I'm, I think I'm giving this record here, I'm giving it a seven. I'm not going to go into an eight because I don't think they're yet, there yet, but I really think it's a seven. And I agree right there with, with Michael Hudson. Gates, yeah, Gates of Tomorrow, I really think is a dud. New Frontier is okay, but Gates of Tomorrow I do not like. But, man, the lead off, the, the first four tunes in a row just really kick ass. And I think they knew how to shave, shave the tunes a little bit, and then they get caught up in what I'm going to start talking about as we go forward. There's so many good fucking riffs going on, okay? it's ne I'm never like, man, what a shitty riff. Eight minutes of a shitty riff. I never think that. What I think is, what a great riff to run into the fucking ground to the point where it's been played too long. It's not like I don't want to hear this riff. I like this riff four, six, maybe eight times, but not 18, not 22, and not repetitive, and not the, you know, I'm fine with, I come from the school of verse, chorus, verse, chorus, solo, third verse maybe a repetitive chorus twice and out. That's the pop school. But these motherfuckers want to go first chorus, first chorus, something strange, another verse chorus, something strange, solo, verse, verse, chorus, and out. You're like, dude, you just played that verse like eight times in eight minutes. And you're like, Jesus Christ. But on this whole record, I don't think there's any really bad riffs. It's no. just the arrangements sometimes, you know, and, I, and I'm and i never going to be have Iron Maiden's money or their fucking talent. But man, <laughs> some of this, I'd like to say, hey man, can I have a shot at arranging a little bit of this for you, man? You know, let me get a because I hear stuff where I'm like, man, if they just dipped it here and cut that two times, and then then they, it seems like sometimes they'll overplay the lead sections, you know, just to give everybody a taste, you know. And I think that's something you just can't do. But I do like the record. I can't stand the album cover art. I did not see the tour. I don't. I I don't. Yeah, I did not fucking see the tour on this one. Um, I'm trying to remember where the fuck they even played on this one. I think I I think I was on tour with deceased when this one was going around or something was going on where I couldn't see it, but I, I enjoy it. I think it's a strong seven for me. All right. <laughs> Ryan right. Muldoon is down there talking journeyman for Steve Perry. <laughs> Ryan, God damn it. There's a big zoinks to you. <laughs> <laughs> he knows what I'm talking about. That son of a bitch. Where, Ryan, would you, while, while we're just while we're real quick, cause he's reading. You saw that Fate's Warning fucking all over shirt last week, motherfucker. <laughs> I told him I was going to get one. I was wearing it last week. I know he's seen it. Okay, go ahead, Alan. I'm shutting up. Oh, it's all good. 
Yeah, this one, uh, you're absolutely right. The, probably the worst Iron Maiden cover art. I, uh. I despise this design. It makes no sense. Eddie's not even recognizable, buried in the background, and just re re really badly done. P poor cover, uh, absolutely. This album I had not heard in a long time. Oh, yeah, so I got cool. it when it came out, played it. Um, I didn't really love or hate it. You know, got it, played it a bunch of times. Like, yeah, it's okay. And um, it's just been shelved. I probably hadn't. I know I, for a fact, I haven't played this album in over a decade until the last two weeks. Uh, so, yeah, it's time to, you know, uh, dust it off and see what I thought. And yeah, pleasantly surprised. This one is really good. To me, this album feels like a victory lap. That, you know, they, they came back, you know, people weren't sure, could they live up to expectations? Could they meet the hype? And they succeeded, even if, you know, Brave New World may have its issues, but it succeeded. Like M Marty said, it was a mission statement. It did the job. And so this kind of now feels like, okay, we are back. It worked. All systems go. And this is them rocking out a bit. Um, there's still four songs above the seven minute mark, but nothing gets to the nine minute mark. So even though it's kind of like you were saying, it's, it's a long, still way over 60 minutes. It doesn't feel as long. No. There are none of these 10, 11, 13 minute tracks. Everything is you know more in the short and medium uh, range on this album. And yeah, overall sound is very good. This band sounds very lively. Sounds like they're having some fun. This is now, like you uh, mentioned, King, the leads start to shine through a bit more. Uh, you know, tracks like New Frontier, they're almost shredding a little bit there yeah. in the middle, really letting it go, which, yeah, is a little unusual for Iron Maiden. They're showing off. They're hot dogging a little bit on that track, and I like it. It's good. It really works well. Uh, even on Passchendaele, you know, which is, you know, one of the longer tracks, you know, with a little more serious, you know, uh, lyrical I think that one's got a little bit of an awkward rhythm for Maiden. It's definitely something that they're starting to branch out a little bit. That's not, you mm -hmm. know, everyday Maiden. Even when they, yep. you know, got longer songs, it's different, I think. Yeah, yeah. But when you get into the bridge of that and, you know, you it's time to solo, they they can. They're kind of revving it up a little bit, even in that song. Uh, and so it it breathes a little life back into that song so that it doesn't start to drag or feel too odd. So, yeah, and again, not a perfect album by any means. Uh, some of the tracks, yeah, like you said, Face in the Sand, that one falls really flat for me. Uh, Rainmaker, on the other hand, a great second track. Really love Wildest Dreams into Rainmaker is a really me nice too. part of the I, album. Me too. Very nice. Uh, uh, was it, yeah, Gates of Tomorrow. Yeah, yeah. There's what no more, t uh, no more lies to me. Now there's one where the repetition starts to drag it down. Uh, that one starts to feel like lightning's striking all over again. I, I like, I like the, the the way it goes though. I do. It's too long again, but it doesn't bother me like lightning because I don't want to hear the lightning strikes twice once. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. It, it's not that bad, but it's just. And again, it's something that's it, it nags at Iron Maiden at times that they just they sometimes just repeat things a few times too many, and they're getting awfully awfully close with no more lies but yeah so yeah I, I was really again i was really impressed i hadn't heard this album in literal years and years um but yeah it broke it back out gave it some uh fair spins and yeah th this this is the band celebrating we're not just back but now we've come back we've proved our point this lineup will work and I think, you know, even just to themselves, they had realized that this lineup will work, that we can coexist now. We've matured. We're, we're old. You know, they've got another. It's been this was 93. Yeah, this is 10 years since they had broken up. You know, so they're, they're 10 years older and wiser. And I remember reading the interviews around this time where, you know, they could say, like, you know, we we're old enough now to know that. We don't need to do the dumb shit that just intentionally annoys one another anymore. You know, that used to, you know, you're on tour all the time and you know this thing's going to bother Steve. Hey, let's let's poke at Steve some today. Hey, Steve, I'm not touching you. I'm not touching you. I'm not touching you. Like, because <laughs> it irritates them. Well, now, yeah, fuck that. I'm you know, that motherfucking rum's kicking in like a <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, you know, they know, uh, 10 years later, they realize that, hey, you know, we can go out on these long tours and we're not going to intentionally you know, do those stupid pranks that maybe annoy some guys. And we're, we're not going to get under each other's skin so much. We, we're a cohesive unit. We get along well now. 
it, you feel like you know the bad bloods under you know it's water under the bridge at this point and well, they truly are blood brothers again <laughs> they are and you know, this oh, is also work that into it, work that into it. <laughs> because you know they've come because they've successfully come back you know this is also the point where you know, with especially the newer younger generation of iron maiden fans iron maiden is now you know getting up to that real you know not just this isn't just anymore the big band from the 80s this is the big band of today that you know they've got a whole new generation of fans that are venerating them the same way that like we were back you know uh you know with the power slave era and things like that the maiden is going through that apotheosis they they're becoming the legend now because they did the big thing they crashed and burned but they they pulled the phoenix and they pulled that trick really well they rose from those ashes and now they can once again they can just dominate and all will hail maiden pretty strongly moving forward they're going to become one of those bands that's a little untouchable uh, you know, the same way that you know, like Motorhead, you know, made this evolution around that time and such. That th they're they're truly cementing their legacy at the top of the pantheon, and they know it. So hey, let's party! I agree. They're building. They're building it to the top right now. Yeah. Yeah. Marty, Dance of Death. Um, other than the cover, I love this album. I did the moment it came out. I think it's better than Brave New World. Um, there's a reason why it's a sixty some minute long album, and it doesn't feel like it. It's because at this point, they're still paying attention to writing songs, good composition, good use of dynamics, um, not beating shit into the ground unnecessarily. I mean, you know, Wildest Dreams is in the three minute mark. Rainmakers in the three minute mark. They don't the songs don't overstay their welcome, which is nice. Mm -hmm. uh, but when they do, like on Passchendaele, it's a good payoff because it's a good song. Like King mentioned, mm -hmm. there's some riffs that might be a little different from Maiden, but um, it builds an intensity that maybe hasn't been felt in Maiden in a while. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. There's a little bit, like I said, the dynamics are very important. Bruce sounds great. I think the Kevin Shirley production is better. It's better than it was on Brave New World. It's still not great, but it's better. It's not Barton Birch great. No, like, no, 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 they never can you imagine them. if Martin Birch laid his hands on this album, yeah. what it could have been? I mean, <laughs> but I mean, I even like Gates of Tomorrow. I like the chorus. I like the chorus. It's got a drive to it. It sticks in your head. Um, I don't know. New Frontier, Passchendaele, Journey, even Journeyman. I like how it ends on us. I like Journeyman like, too. I think it's a good song. I just hear so much dust in the wind in there. Yeah, it's like a thin line between love and hate. They ended this one on a somber note. They ended the Journeyman is kind of a somber note as well. It's kind of cool after, you know, getting hit over the head with some pretty good intense maiden here and there. This is this is a great album. If you can get past the stupid fucking cover, I mean, what the fuck is that? <laughs> That's awful. <laughs> That's terrible. Yeah. Yeah. But um, great. I'm going to have to go with a 7.9, almost an 8 on this one. I really do enjoy it that much. That's, um, you're right there where I am. I'm right there yeah, with you. Yeah. I, I think I forgot I, to rate it. I would, again, I've really just kind of come back to this. I've rediscovered this album, so it's a little hard to rate, but I'm right away i'm comfortable putting it in that strong seven category I, so. I think i'm like you i mean i always liked it you know like you did i today i was just pleasantly surprised i even liked it more than before i think yeah. i'm like alan was the same way like whoa this motherfucker is still pretty good it is funny i mean i'm Zoller's probably watching my buddy Zoller. I, I can hear him chirping in my ear he hates the dance of death uh I'm a pretty little right. girl. I mean, we'll do, there's that irish jig. There's, they, they start getting some irish jigs ain't no, he hates ain't that shit it. But I'm, I always, even though he's chirping in my ear about it, I still love this record. It's it's mm -hmm. a great record. It's almost the best in this whole reunion era for me. Okay. It's in contention, I think. Yep. Which leads us to next up, uh, A Matter of Life and Death, Iron Maiden. What I think it's think? a better album cover. I'll take oh, the album yeah. cover <laughs> in a new way. It's kind yeah. of simplified. It looks like something that yeah. would have come King, Can I interrupt for one second? Just uh, for a quick footnote. In between these two, uh, Bruce did do what I guess is to date his last solo album with Tyranny of Soul. So he was still doing yeah, you know, he, yeah, stuff uh, on the side. Any yeah, quick thoughts? I like thought that. Thought that, that, was about that? that was a I didn't care album. for that one either. I think that was a contract thing. <laughs> I kind of agree. It was not as good as the two before it. It 
it had very little replayability. I got it, played it a few times, like, not bad, but yeah. then I never, ever went back to it. It came and went like Jesse Camp. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Or Slave Raider. <laughs> okay, I just wanted to mention, because in, in the timeline, that does happen before yes, does. this one comes out. I don't mind this cover. It's 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 almost death metal-y. <laughs> kind of. You know, but I don't mind it. I... This one, before I get into the album, I was supposed to see this tour. Some uh, family stuff came up. We couldn't go. I gave my tickets away, and I guess the, the tank they brought out on the show, it stalled on stage. <laughs> they brought it out. So I gave my tickets to a friend, and he was like, dude, the whole show, though, all, all the props were fucking failing that night, man. Um, I guess this is a good enough time to bring up Paul Abdul. <laughs> you know, the old two steps forward, three steps back thing. This one is better than Brave New World, but it's not as good as Dance of Death for me. So it's it sits where five for Brave New World and seven for fucking Dance of Death. This is a six for me. And I'm going to tell you hmm. why. Because I think it's got one of the best Maiden tunes since they got back with Bruce on it. Brighter than a thousand suns. Great song. What a fucking nice. vicious, intense song. And I know it's, I don't think it's on YouTube anymore, but it used to be up. They had a, they had a live in the studio version from Abbey Road. Man, was that fucking huh. good to watch. It was fucking good. It was up for a while, and then somebody took it. Somebody, whoever had it up, took it down, or it got taken down. And then they put it up with a fake, you know, fan made video, which had maybe a second or two of that thrown into them amongst a bunch of war stuff. Blah 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 blah. Yeah, a different world. I liked. It's a little. It's a little happy on the chorus. I don't know when that comes in, but I like it. Um, These colors don't run. Became a song they played a bunch back then live that I thought was really cool. Um, I know Marty disappeared, but this is when you get into some of Marty's the songs, you know, on this record, you get the pilgrim. Mm -hmm. You know, there's definitely the pilgrim, there's the legacy on this one. I think um, I don't really like the title of the reincarnation of Benjamin Brieg, but I like the tune. I like Fair, the, yeah. I don't I don't know what to cut, you know, whatever. Um, the music's good in that one. Out of the shadows comes and goes for me. I'm just looking for the greater good of God. I like I like the melodies in this, I like mm -hmm. the drum playing on this album a lot. I think I think um, Bruce is continuously sounding good on vocals. I think the leads are good on this one. The record has got a nice rawler guitar tone than the one before it. I don't think the songs is, are as memorable, and I don't think the legacy as a closer is as, is as good as Journeyman. But I do mm -hmm. like this record. I do think it's cool, and I mean, it, I, I don't know where else to go with this one except it's just it's just like right where we were with Dance of Death. I just don't think the songs are as good. I think the album mm -hmm. cover art's better. I think the production is mm, it's similar. I think Bruce's is strong. I think Nico actually plays a little less simplified on this one, uh, which he gives a little bit of a little little swing to it in, in parts. There's there's again where it's this one's 72 minutes. This yep. one this one could have probably gone about 20 minutes shorter. Yeah, you know maybe 52 55 minutes. I'd have been okay with that, but it is what it is as far as that goes. I like it. I don't love it. I like it. I like it as a solid six. I wouldn't go six, five or anything like that. It's a six for me. It's a st It's definitely a step down from dance, but it's a step up from brave. I will say this. The best song on this one is, is probably my favorite. One of my favorite songs with Bruce since he came back is definitely brighter than a thousand suns. I fucking love that song. It's one of my all time favorites, mm -hmm. but I did not see the tour. Marty, you, you disappeared from that. I did bring up the fact that they had some of your, the songs like the pilgrim and the legacy on this. Oh, one. the last couple have had it too. Yeah, they have. I know. Oh, yeah. Brave New world was full of it. Yeah. They're always there Mary and all that kind of stuff. But, but I do like this record. I don't, it's it, it, as much as I'm not saying about this record, it's kind of like what I'm saying about this record. It's just, it was just, an, I don't want to call it a placeholder because it was good. It was strong. Mm -hmm. It was a step down from the one before, but it was a step up from brave new world. So you kind of like one, you kind of like two, three, one is how I'm standing with that since they've got back with Bruce. And I liked it. I did not see the tour. As I said, I've watched videos. <laughs> looking, they were rocking and having a good time and still building that, you know, stairway to the stars, man. Yep. Appreciated it. Alan. Yeah. Um, my thoughts on this one are always a little mixed. Um, with this, when this album was coming out and it was getting reviewed, people you know, immediately noticed the length. And as we've noted, you know, Maiden albums have been getting pretty long for a while now, but yeah, it's 72 minutes, you know, with 10 songs. It, people immediately noticed, you know, that this is running pretty long form. And uh, in particular, again, this time you've got six out of 10 songs that exceed the seven minute mark. So the songs are definitely now, you've got over half your songs on this album running pretty long. So it's going to take a while to get through. 
Um, one thing that bothered me a lot in, in all the press leading up to this and the you know initial round of reviews and discussions, a lot of people looked at those lengths and they started justifying it in terms of calling it proggy, that mating was going in kind of a proggy direction here, that, oh, well, the songs are long, but that's because they're they're going back to like, you know, their progressive 70s roots and they like all these progressive 70s bands and stuff. And I have never heard a lick of that really, maybe a little here or there. I don't hear that in these, in this album or in the later albums. I get the same. I, I hear it at times, not on this album as much. I, I think, yeah, like you're, what you're there, saying. There, about are, there, are, there are portions here and there, but I, I think that is a mistake. I think that's a misconception on people's part. <laughs> Long does not equal prog. You can have very short songs that are very progressive sounding, and you can have very long songs that are just long rock songs. Uh, I think it's, I, I think it's, yeah, I, that's the wrong label to put on this album. This is not a progressive sounding heavy metal album. This is just a heavy metal album with very long songs on it. Um, and I, I don't know if, People just miss that fact in a way. And again, this is maybe me being a little too cynical. I almost felt like some people kept applying the prog label to it almost as a way to make an excuse or to apologize for the length. That people are just like, oh, no, no, it's okay that it's that long because they're being proggy. It's like, no, they're not. They're just being long. No, 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 no. They are being really long, but that's okay. there's a reason. It's like, that's not a good reason because that's not what it sounds like. So it's always irritated me that people well, yeah, want I mean, to I don't, I don't on call, labeling I don't call the album in such a weird way. times in a row, Proggy. You know, that's one of the things. And, yes. when I said I, and what I said I'd get to eventually was, I'll say it now since you're talking about it now, is, is when fucking you play a riff 16 times and somebody says, hey, put some lyrics in there. And you've already wrote the lyrics to a song that, you know, runs way shorter than what's in there. You don't have nothing to do but to sing the repeat repeat mm -hmm. repeat and then now all of a sudden you got a fucking repetitive chorus on top of a repetitive riff section whatever you want to call it and there's yep. 16 times in a row doesn't make it proggy to take no. four riffs and play them jumping around two three one time like that makes it proggy it's a, yep. it's a jumping style it's a it's a, mm -hmm. it's a i don't want to say it's a cut and paste but it's a cut and paste thing to play a riff ding da -da -ding, da -da -ding, da -da -ding, da -da ding one and you're going to do it 32 times and yeah. or or even at times, and I love Maiden, but what, Jesus Christ, when the bass does it for 12 times and then the band comes in and does it for a whole, you know, something mm -hmm. else, it's like, holy fucking moly, you know? So that, yeah. I totally agree with you on this. I do feel at times they're going to get proggy and they, they have had moments, but it's sure ain't enough to cover the fucking any of the albums. No, no, I, I, I'm glad we're in agreement on that. Um, now, that said, it may sound like I'm complaining about the album a lot. There's a lot of good music on the album. I'm not saying it is a bad album. It's not. It, it's it's a, it's a fairly good album, kind of like UK. It's not as good as Dance of Death. Um, personally, now again, I'm higher on Brave New World than you are. I don't think it's quite as good as Brave New World, but it's not a bad album. Uh, looking at it in particular, yeah, Brighter Than a Thousand Suns is the big standout track for me as well. Really, really put together track. That's a heavy guitar, and it works for me. It doesn't sound out of place to me. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and that song doesn't have too much repetition in it, actually. For its length, they don't go back to that chorus line uh, all that often. Actually, I actually, after playing it a couple times, I went back just to play and count to make sure I wasn't missing something. And they really only repeat Brighter Than a Thousand Suns about eight to 12 <laughs> times through the whole yeah, yeah. And for eight minutes, that's not a lot. No, uh, sure, sure, sure. So, yeah, it, you know, they didn't get stuck on that. Uh, some others, uh, I'm not as, you know, The Pilgrim doesn't do as much for me. Uh, yeah, The Reincarnation of Benjamin Beeg, just, that, that's a very awkward title to work with. Doesn't mean that, that there's some good like parts the to the song. I like the title. Yeah, there's some good parts to the song, but, you know, you're, you're adding some baggage to a track when you give it a long, weird title like that. Uh, I like For the Greater Good of God. Uh, yeah, it, um, so yeah. There's good stuff on here, but yes, this is this album could be much shorter. And in a lot of cases, I mean, even just taking some of the songs and trimming them down a tad, you wouldn't be losing anything critical, I don't think. E even you know, the song I like most, Brighter Than a Thousand Suns, it clocks in, uh, it's saying here, eight minutes, 44 seconds. You could probably trim 90 seconds off the beginning and the end of that song. It's mostly the quiet intro. 
Yeah, yeah, and, and yeah, then you could trim some of that quiet mm -hmm. intro and a little bit of that quiet outro. Mm -hmm. The song would still be over seven minutes long, but it would just be a little tighter and it would help, you know, the album move along better. So yeah, not a bad album at all. Pretty decent album, but it's one of those that it really by the time you get all the way through it, you feel like you've done some work. Uh, you, yeah, yeah, you, you know, exactly. And we have to we have to struggle to finish an album, it's obviously not a, a great, great album. Yeah, and, and it's not that the songs are bad. It's not that the performances are bad. It's just that they're getting very long-winded here. Six out of ten tracks exceed the seven-minute mark. You're getting a little long in the tooth, and this is as good a point as any to say it. Uh, I'll echo something I remember Martin Popoff saying once. Sometimes I agree with Martin, sometimes I don't. I, he's flat out said, he's like, I'm not a big fan of Iron Maiden when they start writing longer and longer and longer songs. And that holds for me as well. Can they do some exceptionally people, good? They can do some exceptionally good long form songs, but they try to do it too often. And so you end up with a bunch of average at best long form songs. And that's, that makes for a really drawn out feeling album. So to wrap this one up, um, this one, yeah, it's kind of there in that six, seven range. Um, it, it's, a decent album, but it's got its flaws, and a big part of that is just you know, the songs are getting unnecessarily long, you know, very medium. There's not a there's not as much energy on this album. You're coming off a real dynamic album, uh, you know, with a very long album. I'm not going to say it's ponderous or tedious because that gives the wrong connotation, but it's just it's a lot longer than it needs to be for the, for the material. So. Yeah. Yeah, let's let's put it in that six seven category again. I'll give it a B minus, where it's like at the end of the day, good album, but there's a definite flaw here that bothers. Yeah, me. I agree. I so agree. that that's my take on this one, Marty. What's your take? Well, I'm going to be the odd man out here. Um, this album, I think, I mean, it's so close to Dance of Death, but I think it's a bit better than Dance of Death. This album okay. for me is probably the best in the re reformation. Um. This I'm going to get hot garbage and burning dirty diapers thrown at me for this, but this is probably one of my favorite Bruce Dickinson vocal performances. Listen to this album. This motherfucker earned his paycheck on this album. I agree. I think it's really good. Definitely. <laughs> he sings He sings in the Air Raid Siren range for 95% of this album, and he is not faltering. He is nailing it. He, sound, he sounds revitalized. He sounds young. He sounds great. I mean, listen to uh, Be Quick or Be Dead. Listen to um, those two albums, Fear of the Dark. Listen to the, um, yeah, he's uh, the album that came Yeah. He's rough and ragged and torn. This shit, he is rejuvenated. He sounds fucking great. Kevin Shirley's mm -hmm. best production of this reunion. This is the best produced album in the reunion, as far as I'm concerned. The album sounds together. It sounds tight. I think... This album, Dance of Death, has got a little bit more attention to dynamics and composition. I think these songs, a couple of them get a little long. I think Lord of Light could have probably been nixed from the album and it would have been better for it. It's still not a bad song. There isn't a bad song on this album. The songs, there's like, the way it's produced and mixed, a lot of the songs sound very similar. But if you really sit and strip them down and listen to them. There's some exciting shit going on in these songs. I'm not saying it's prog. I'm saying there's some cool maiden stuff. Um, there's, good performances throughout, yeah. there's some really good uh, uh, shifts between riffs. There's good music breaks. There's a lot of strong playing on here and it's tied together by the best Bruce Dickinson vocal performance. I mean, right. You know, that the sun song, man, that one alone, that's the one of his best oh. vocals, man. Yep. That's up there with children of the damned, man. I think. <laughs> yeah. I mean, uh, greater good of God. I also really love that yeah. song. The whole build up to the chorus, the chorus is short. It's just the name of the song, but there's a good payoff to it. The way it flows with the music. It's really cool. And people kind of like dismiss this album as whatever. Um, it's just, it's really well written. It's amazing. I haven't listened to it in a while. And um, I put it on tonight. I was playing Tetris, waiting for the show to start. And I put it on tonight. I was surprised how much of it I was singing along with. And I got excited listening to it. I think it's a really good album. It's a really strong effort. And for me, this is the last really good Iron Maiden album. The rest, what, what was we will get into here, 
shit's fucking falling off the fucking spaceship as far as i'm concerned i don't think they're gonna make it to mars but um <laughs> this album wow i mean people kind of turn their nose it's long it's too long it's too this it's too that listen to it listen to bruce he is fucking crushing absolutely crushing in a high register i mean he couldn't have done that after the world slavery tour <laughs> He would they weren't recording this album after right, the world right, right. Mm -hmm. He sounds rested, he sounds young, he sounds like he never really has sounded. I mean, he's always sounded like Bruce, but man, he's in that high register for 95% of this album. It's a lot, it's a lot, and he nails it. Great album, love it. I'll give it right I'll give it an eight. It's an eight. Yeah, all fan, day. Fantastic. I'm well, glad you like it. Yep. I think a lot of folks do. I mean, it was very well received when it came out. I don't know if people feel how they feel about how it's aged, but it, it was, yeah, considered a big success, you know, a big feather in their cap at the time. A lot of folks gave it a lot of praise when it came out. I, I was one of the few people that I, you know, came across. I was kind of like, eh, I'm a little more meh about it than the average person seemed to be. <coughs> But it's it's held up well, and you and you are right, Marty. There's a lot of good stuff, you know, performances and highlights in there. And there's just a lot to swim through to find it. Sometimes. A lot, but, you got to spend but, time but, with the it, album. It's one of those. Listen, it's a grower for sure. And, and that may be fair. And that's something I'll admit about myself. Some of these longer albums, you know, as soon as somebody starts saying you got to spend a ton of time with it, that's usually one of those little canary in you know the back of my you know mental coal mine where I'm just like. Ah, uh, that may be true. I'm that is not something I'm always willing to do. I'm not always willing to give these super long albums as much time as they might yeah, need I mean. to fully grow on me. I only have so much time to listen to stuff. I, I can listen to you know two new wave of British heavy metal albums in the time it takes to get through this one Iron Maiden album. I, I, Sometimes yeah, it's just not a headspace for this one. It's not a party sure. record. It's not one you put in a car and drink beer and go you know go no. to a concert with and shit like that. But I do think there's a there's a time and place for the and this is one thing too. Yeah. I want to say this later this later Maiden stuff. This is more of a fucking sit down on your stereo and get lost in records. There's no there's no more yeah. party albums from them. There's no running freeze anymore. That's gone. Mm -hmm. All that's gone. You know. So it's it's a new it's a new ball. Game game but then you also have to imagine this is what i do with these songs imagine if they had a whole record back then of strange world and remember tomorrow and stuff just a whole record like that that's kind of what this is in a in a longer mm -hmm. more mature older type of thing way that's that's what mm -hmm. i think i think it's definitely a different headspace you can't put it on at a party and expect someone to get it no definitely not yeah and yeah and just you know yeah for me personally those albums sometimes i just uh you gotta I, be in the mood it's, I it's my it's it's on me that you know i don't it's the patience it's a lack of time it's the inability to sit down i can't commit 20 72 minute spins to one iron maiden album i just right i get you I it get would you. take me four fucking months to play that out <laughs> this many times to where i'm sitting right, down and really the, focused comes the f word <laughs> yeah hey yeah. zoller what's up man good to see you Hey, yeah, right. Right. yeah, just you know, with my you know, with, with work and family and other stuff going on, sometimes I just can't, you know, I can't commit to these, you know, a ton of time to these deep albums that require that much time to really penetrate, and that's that's on me. I just can't do it sometimes. Nebulous Prowler brought up a good point here, and it and it's, I think this is really cool that they did this, but they played this in its entirety on this tour, which I thought was fucking ballsy and really cool because. I'm sure it pissed off most of the ticket holders oh, who yeah. wanted to see running free and run to the hills and all that crap. I mean, it's not crap. It's awesome. But I mean, how many, I mean, really do you need to go see Maiden do those songs again? You believe, I mean, hey, that's the thing is the bottom line with the band. If you believe in it, play it. If you know, if people want to come, they'll come. It did, obviously it didn't stop. Hi, Craig. Good to see you, brother. Bone Tomahawk forever, brother. Hey, <laughs> we, I, I got to work on the man. I think, after one of our last episodes with King, he's like, I might, I wanted to comment on a bunch of stuff. We might get him on the show one of these days. I might, I might get you, Craig. Damn it. There you go. Come on on. Do it, Craig. We'd love to have you. Let you jam awesome to talk to you one night. The master plan. But no, I right do. Yes, I, I agree. I, I agree. It was cool to do that. It's cool. And I mean, it's ballsy. I mean, you want to promote that album, play the fucking album. And they believed in it enough to do so, which. I, didn't I mean, it's a long album. Sense. <laughs> yep. <laughs> yep. But anyway, uh, what's next? We've got, we got the final. Frontier. Frontier. A very critically acclaimed album. 20. Which 
I don't get it, but we'll get to that when I get here. I'll, I'll tell you this. I saw that video on YouTube when it came out for the title track. I thought it was, I think it's a fantastic fucking title track. Unfortunately, the rest of the album's not so hot. It's, it's, it's not bad, but it's, it's, it's definitely back to, I think it's even below Brave New World for me after listening to it today. I really like the intro for the record. The satellite thing they do is definitely different for Maiden. For That's sure. an Adrian thing. That's it's an Adrian totally, thing. It's totally off the cuff. Adrian, <laughs> surprisingly, Adrian did that, but cool by him. The Final Frontier, the song, I like it. I like the vocal. I like the chorus. It's very, to me, that's almost a, to me, that's almost a return to 80s heavy metal Iron Maiden on this tune for me. Um, it goes on, El Dorado. Eh, it doesn't do a lot for me. It's okay. Mother of Mercy's okay. Coming Home is very ballady, but um, mm-hmm. it's okay. No, it's not their worst album, Craig. <laughs> Sorry, virtual will always be the worst. But um, and, and then I look at the other ones, stuff like Star Blind, The Man Who Would Be King. Just I mean, Dave Murray does not succeed on that one. When the wild wind blows, I mean, that's kind of that. I almost chuckled today thinking back like, yep, yeah, when it's called when the wild wind blows, you're going to get wind coming in and you're going to get wind coming out. It's like <laughs> going to a bean eating contest. <laughs> <laughs> I did see this fucking tour at Madison Square Garden. They were fucking phenomenal. These songs were better live. This is a flat production. This is Kevin Shirley not fucking getting it right Ugh. on this one. It's a, uh, I'm going to, I'm going to say this for me is the worst album they put out since they came back. I'm going to put it just a little bit below Brave New World, which I don't love either. Um, I like, again, when I'm saying this, it's not like I, Virtual X1 is the only one I just can't find nothing to say good. I like, I, I, this, this one runs 77 minutes almost, Alan. Yeah, um, it's, 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 it's 30 minutes too long for sure. It's 30 minutes too long. This should be a 40-minute album, and I think I could take it. This is one of the albums where, again, I said earlier, I'll never have their money or their talent, but I'd like to be the one to help arrange these fucking songs, get this shit in some kind of, like, order, because there's a lot of cool riffs, and then there's a lot of, like, out-of-placements that don't make songs. You know, it's it's a, it's an assortment of riffs more than it's an assortment of songs to me. Uh, the tour was cool. I like the final frontier of the song. I think it's a really good song. I like the video. Uh, they were good live. The, I like the snare on this record. I like the playing on this record, but I do not think the songs as arrangements are that good. Um, it's becoming one of those things where they're just kind of writing about anything now because they have so many albums. And it just seems sometimes like they're writing about the same thing under a different kind of thing. Mm-hmm. No. I'm <laughs> sorry, Craig. No. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, um, yeah, it's it's not good. Electric Banana has got it right. It's it's not very it's not very good, but it's uh it's 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 I would say okay here we go it's my second least favorite Maiden album right after right after Virtual, it's my second least and then Brave will come in third. <laughs> is that fucking true? The Leonard Nimoy playing keyboards is that true? No, it's not. That's a joke. Okay. Only in Ryan Muldoon world. <laughs> <laughs> Back to All another right, point for Ryan, but yeah, but you know, hey, this is the wor- we've done four now for this coming coming back with Bruce, and this is the, the this is the worst one. Brave is the second worst one. I mean, I don't even want to say it is the second least best. I don't like to use the word because it's Maiden. And I, you know, I, I, it's a thing too where, I mean, what can they do at this point but continuously put stuff out? And I do know as we're going to go on, if they literally throw these records together they, and they, they like doing it that way. They like getting away for fucking 12 weeks and having the record done. That's weird as shit to me, especially how much you're coming in. And maybe it's a thing where they're just like, man, I like this rip so much. I'm going to play the shit out of it. But as a listener, they're too long. They're too unarranged. I think this is where Martin Birch needs to bring that fucking chop block in and, and say, hey, look, dude, here, here, and here. Not here, 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 and here. You know, some of these songs have an extra two riffs that don't belong. They're good riffs, but don't belong amongst the riff of the song or, the, the you know, the aura of the song. Well, it all boils down to they need a producer, and they don't yeah. have one. They've got a guy that yeah. says, okay, Steve. Steve. Yeah, it's Steve, and he's, you know, and he's not a producer. I mean, he's a hell of a bass player, and he's a hell of a fucking showman, but it doesn't have it in this one. Because of that, has to take a step. And he's back. a hell of a yeah. songwriter, but if you it, think if it was all these one, years you have it figured out, you know. If it was this one and Virtual X one were the ones people were always saying, Iron Maid's not that good a band. They would have a, they would have a cause because it's not great. It's better than a lot of bands, but it's not as good for Iron Maid. It's just way down the elevator shaft. I yeah, like I say, I'm giving this. Uh, what did I say? I gave Brave a five. I'll give this a four. Virtual is a three. This is a four. Okay, Alan. Uh, let's see. This was one that 
again, weird things that irked me about this album. As soon as this album was announced, as soon as the title was announced, it, the entire world immediately started babbling, oh, is this going to be the last Iron Maiden album? It's called The Final Frontier. And just like, did they say this was going to be their final album? <laughs> did they give any indication this was going to be their final album? Get that wrong. <laughs> Shut the fuck up. <laughs> uh, it, 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 was just, it was just one of those, it was such a dumb thing that, you know, why do you immediately jump to that conclusion that it's their last album just because it, it looked, they've released the cover art. There's a space thing going on. The title and the art is kind of a pretty clear connection, but everyone immediately wanted to, the little rumor gossip mill just had to fire up and start, you know, going off about, you know, oh man, this might be Iron Man's last outing. Is, is, is there a code in the title? No, it's not the fucking Da Vinci code. It's an Iron Maiden album. Shut up and enjoy it. Um, so yeah, that irked me. I and mean, there's nothing about the album. It was just the, the reaction to it I thought was really just, just really silly. Geeky. Very geeky. <laughs> very, very geeky in the, the there is no reason in the world to think that. Kind of, you know, wh where are you getting this from? Just shut up. Kind of <laughs> annoy it's it's the annoying mean, kind of geeky. <laughs> it's the shut up and eat your cheese nerd kind of <laughs> annoying. <laughs> Man, no more Gatorade for you. Cheers. <laughs> what do you want to do now? Tequila? No, I'm drinking the melted ice from the oh, uh, rum and coke. Okay. <laughs> but uh, hey, before you get before you get into it, otherwise I do just to finish off mine. That album artwork is weird. I don't know what what I think about that. It looks like a video game. It's better than Dance of Death. It is, but it's still weird. <laughs> It, it, yeah, that and that is a good point here. The album artwork is, you know, it's it's a kind of gruesome horror alien kind of thing going on. The I don't like the Eddie in particular. The, the, yeah. the Eddies almost become unrecognizable. I mean, they always did different things, but there was never any doubt that whether it was you know the trooper or the pilot on Aces High or the tail gunner, you looked at it and that's Eddie. Yeah, even this the thing you kind of look at it. Yeah, even this thing you kind of look at it's like well. Thing. I guess if you kind of look at it, it's yeah. I guess it. I guess it's Eddie by default because it's on an Iron Maiden cover. You show that piece of artwork to someone without the Iron Maiden logo on it, did they immediately think Eddie? Oh, right. Um, so yeah, yeah. We weird cover. Um, but yeah, let's get into the album itself. Um, again, I agree with a lot of the points you made, King. A lot of these songs they feel a little haphazard. They're very much, it starts to feel like they're revisiting some of the same ideas and just putting a new title on it. Um, it's not that performances are necessarily bad, but it, it doesn't feel like they're adding a whole lot here. Uh, now, I don't like the opening. I know you said that, King, you do. I The satellite thing, they tried something new. Nothing wrong with that. I, I feel like it gets the album off to a real clunky start. It, it, it For me personally, it did not work. Um, and then, yeah, you go through a bunch of songs, kind of like you said, El Dorado, eh, okay, Mother of Mercy, eh, okay. Uh, You're looking and, for one, right? You're looking for one that really stands out, right? Yeah, exactly. I'm looking for something to latch onto here, and you know, uh, it finally comes for me around, I think it's Starblind, around track seven. It kind of starts to be like, okay, that's a little better. That's not so bad. And yeah, I think like out of those last four, three of the last four are ones that's like, okay, the end of this album, it starts to redeem itself a little bit. It's, you know, kind of digging itself out of the hole a little bit. But uh, so yeah, this, I guess, shorthand, this is very much a side A versus side B kind of album that it, it, there's nothing on side A that catches my interest and some of the items miss the mark. You get towards the end on, it's like, okay, there's some stuff here that uh, th these tracks, yeah, a step up from what you had before. Uh, but yeah, and then that's just kind of it. There's nothing, there's no track to rant and rave about here or anything. Again, yeah, we're looking at 76 minutes. And once again, you've got six out of 10 songs passing that seven minute mark. 76 fucking minutes. Yeah, is there, the is there anything... You know, magic about the seven minute mark. No, I no. just picked that as a you know as a point that once you get past seven minutes, you're into a long song for sure. Doesn't mean it's going to be bad, but you know, Maiden is really filling these albums with long songs that don't need to be long. Um, so yeah, in terms of wrapping this one up, 
There's some stuff I like on it towards the end. That there's not a whole lot to hang my hat on. When I was listening to this, and I actually played this one a couple of times to make sure I wasn't missing stuff, the thought that finally kind of stuck in my head was that this album was sort of, for this era of Iron Maiden, this kind of felt like the, the no prayer for the dying of this era. That it's the album that just feels kind of dull. There, mm. It's not terrible, but there's no songs you can really hang your hat on. That it's it's just not that there's nothing there that's too memorable. So, uh, in terms of marks, I'll give I'll give this one the same thing I gave No Prayer for the Dying. I'll give it a five out of ten, and I'm going to call that a C minus. This is this is a bit this is kind of disappointing. Uh, so yeah, I agree with you, King. Out of out of the reunion albums we've covered so far, definitely the one that's got the least going on for me personally. It, it seemed to me when they did this one too, if I remember right in the timing of it all, that it was really kind of like just kind of came out of nowhere. It was out. And I just felt like they just got it out to go back on tour yet again, which I could be totally wrong about, but that's just what I remember in my head. I don't know. It's hard to say. I mean, because me tour cycle like, well, is so play. crazy. Just, don't forget through all this, they're also coming back doing those fucking greatest hits tours too. They're putting the old stage shows together. Cause I know I seen them yeah. like, they're like, we're going to do one new album and we're going to come out and do a greatest hits. And we're going to do a new album. Yeah. Legacy of the beast, play more greatest hits, which I appreciate it. Cause as Marty was saying with the last one, they went out and played the whole album and stuff. They could still do that. And they, they told people, look, they, they did tell people we're not playing all the fucking hits this tour. So stay mm -hmm. home. If this ain't the, what you want to see, we'll be yeah. back and we'll play that. And we'll let you know, we're going to play that. Yeah. You know, I remember being at the, I remember being at this show here and they didn't play a couple songs. Like I was like, Oh my God, what are they? What is this shit? I don't know this shit. And, yeah. and I'm like, look, dude, you can't knock a band that believes in their music. You paid to see them play. If you played, yeah. to, paid them to see the hits. Well, that's, if they don't play them, they don't fucking play them. Dude. Yeah. You don't, they don't owe that to you. If, if they've told you up front, they, that's a good point. If you only want to hear the classics for this tour, you better just run to the hills and come back. Because yeah, you can go see them. I, you know, I've seen them many times. They're playing all those songs that everybody wants to hear. Yep. Okay, so Marty, your turn. Final Frontier. Well, in my little uh, pea-sized brain, this is the second worst Iron Maiden album. I hate this album. I don't hate it as much as Virtual Eleven, but this album... It's got one song. I love the song Coming Home. I like the lyrics. Yeah. I think it's really cool. Bruce put his perspective of flying into lyrics. It's really cool. It's got the kind of heart that maybe Wasted Years does lyrically. I think it has the same kind of spirit. You know, I get you could that. tell you could tell he's very passionate about the subject matter, which translated well in the song. I like the song. The rest of this album is boring as shit. It's too fucking long. And I remember when this came out, people were crapping their pants over it. And I would go back and listen to it. Am I missing something? And and this is coming off a long album. I mean, this is not a short album by right. any stretch of the imagination. But Bruce's performance, the production, and the excitement in the songwriting is here. It is not here. Bruce sounds tired. The songs are long, boring. They sound like they just used whatever riff they pulled out of their ass. It just is a very uninspired album to me. I think, in fact, even though that isn't a great Eddie, I still like uh, the cover is better than, well, it's, it's, I don't know. I it's like better it better than the music. <laughs> it's better than the fucking music and it's better than dance of death for sure. But yeah, yeah. this album, I never understood. And, 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 you know, yeah, there was scuttle, but I mean, even some of the lyrics on this, it's, it's coming from an, an, an older person perspective and, um, I get it. I can see why people gravitated toward this might be the last maiden. And then Bruce is saying, well, you know, Nico is going to be like 75 when we tour this album or, you know, for the long touring session, he's going to be getting older. And after hearing this, uh, like a, a minimum of eight times, I'm like, God, I wish they'd be done. If this is what they're going to start turning out, I kind of wish they would just call it. Cause I mean, it's, this is, well, we're going to get to where I'm going to, I'm going to end on the last album with my thoughts on what Maiden's doing now. But, um, this is average to the, uh, this is a three album all day long for me and, uh, virtual 11 is a two and I gave it a little bit better cause it's not as re repetitious. I mean, the repetition on virtual is, is fucking terrible. This, this is just boring. It's long and boring. There's nothing on here that sounds vital to me. I like one song. You know, the um, the title track, it's okay. I really like that one, man. That's my favorite. There's something about it, man. His vocals, the final frontier, 
it sounds like he's really mm-hmm. kind of straining to get there. It reminds, whereas, me, so it reminds me of somewhere in time on that one, not because it's spacey too, but just reminds me of that vibe caught somewhere sound, in time. Vibe. He sounds strained getting there, but on I this show, I agree he's with crushing. you. I agree with you. The vocal. I don't get it. Best. I, I got to mm-hmm. go by the song. I mean, you know what I'm saying? I like the song. It, it was better live. I'll put it that way. Sure. But yeah, that's a three album for me. And again, for, if you like it, you know, we all got to live in our own heads. We all hear the same piece of music differently. That's Based why on, we all got to look. I have King Fally and he's got Marty Worm and he's got Alan yep. Let's Talk Metal. Everybody gets to be themselves. That's why we all get our own names. That's right. And that's, yep. you know, it, you know, opinions are like assholes. <laughs> Everybody's got <laughs> one. And, my, and mine's got a little virtual 11 kid looking at it as a tattoo, which is fine. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck you. <laughs> But I don't have the Angel and the Gambler 12 inch. So, I mean, yes. I'm, I'm not that dedicated of a fan. I'm 12 and a half. Thank you. <laughs> it was I, cold. I, I, it was cold when I bought it. It's it was cold two. when I bought it. I actually had two of them. And <laughs> both gone in a raffle the Angel and the Gambler. <laughs> All right. So, um, after that. Well, well yeah. After, I gotta, I'm, I'm going to take charge for a second over you, Marty, for a second. You go brother. for it. After you just said how Iron Maiden, they're going to go out like that, then fuck them. This next Iron Maiden album is one of the best Iron Maidens ever made for me. Okay. Book of Souls is phenomenal. It is. I played this record. I've tell people this. This is the best record made in the world by any band in the last 10 years plus for me. I've wow. played this record on, I tell you, ask my wife. I've played this over 150 fucking times. I love this record. I love the emotions of this record. I love the melodies of this record. I love just about everything about this record, man. I was, so, it. I was so, I was so fucking blown away when I got this fucking thing. Now, the first thing I saw was the new video for Speed of Light. And instantly I said, oh my God, this is a 1981 New Ever British Heavy Metal single song. It's phenomenal. And it was shorter. And I was like, man, it doesn't sound like that goofy shorter. Because Iron Maiden in these days, love the cover art, love the whole thing of that. Best Eddie in a long time to me. That looks like Eddie. Okay. Yep. That looks that one you can cool. see it. Yeah. And I got that. I got a couple versions of this fucking thing. But anyway, I, fucking Speed of Light was absolutely an A plus. I'm like, this is a long lost New River British Heavy Metal single that sat at the bottom of fucking, you know, somebody's fucking, you know, we'll say John Allenson's fucking. <laughs> I know. <laughs> that's the <laughs> Allen joke. The fucking yeah. bottom of, his, of the barrel. Then I bought the <laughs> album. I put the fucking record on. I was so excited to hear it. If Eternity Should Fail absolutely phenomenal phenomenal it reminds me of the song power slave it has that fucking intense excellent fucking intro the way it comes in the way it vibes out it's fucking iron maiden up 100 my buddy steve's like oh dude this doesn't sound like iron maiden well it doesn't sound like iron maiden to you i've been listening to him since i was a fucking kid of fucking 13 years old it sounded like fucking iron maiden yes i love it too my friend Speed of Light comes up. I already know how good that is. The Great Unknown. Fucking another cool song, man. I love the melodies in this fucking thing. I fucking think I, it's not too long to me. Wade, it's not too long to me, my friend. The Red and the Black has one of, if not the best, live jam they've ever done in a live situation. I've seen, I saw this tour three fucking times. I loved it that much. And that fucking Red and the Black jam they fucking do live. Is unbelievable. That that's where the three guitar playing is beautiful. It's fucking haunting and beautiful. I love it. Okay, and that's 13 and a half minutes, and that's one of the times when all those guitars go fucking wild. And then fucking when the river runs deep, that's one of my least favorites on the record. Yeah, if I had to fun. choose something, that's a step down. The Book of Souls, I love. It sounds like it could have been on Rainbow Fucking Rising, could have been a rainbow fucking tune. It's fucking phenomenal. I love Bruce's voice. It's damaged. We know what he went through with his with his cancer and all that stuff. It's damaged, but it's like Ian Gillen, man. I love what he's doing because it's honest. It's not faked. It's not Aussied up. It's not computerized. It's not horse shitted out. Death or Glory, another fucking amazing song. Could have been the fucking the B side to Speed of Light for that you know that classic New Wave British heavy metal single. Love the shit out of it. And then my friends. We get to the absolute best Iron Maiden song they've recorded since they got back with Bruce. One of my all-time favorite Maiden songs, Shadows of the Valley. What melodies in this one? Haunting. It gives me the whole history of Maiden, the vibe, the emotions of my life, within my life, the good, the bad, and the awful. It's all within there for me. The beautiful, It's. I keep coming back to the word haunting. It's so fucking good. It's so good. One of my favorite Maiden songs, you know, of the, of the, uh, we'll go underneath the radar, that one. And we'll also go back and talk about last week's Judas, Judas Be My Guide. 
was another one for me. Tears of a Clown, a great fucking single. We know it's about Robin Williams. He did a nice job. It was an oddity because it just seemed, you know, odd to write about Robin Williams in an Iron yep. Maiden world. It's not out of a history book, though it's history. It's, fa it's fantastic. They played it live. It was great. So was Death or Glory. One of the best songs live was Death or Glory. Man of Sorrow is a little step down. Not one of my favorites, but I really do fucking like it. Um, you, on this one, the worst is still the balls are fucking up, man. You know, they haven't dropped yet. They don't have to. They're way up here, man. And the one everybody says, oh, a fucking goddamn fucking almost 20-minute fucking song. Empire of the Clouds. What the fuck? Piano on an Iron Maiden. Fuck, what the fuck? I love it. It's beautiful. It's Bruce Dickinson's fucking life and a fucking thing through his fucking love of airplanes and all that stuff. I can feel mm -hmm. the emotion. I love the bass playing. I love the drumming. I love the singing. I love the hauntingness of it. This record, man, I play it. I want to go. When I get off here, I'm going up and I'm going to fucking play it again. It <laughs> reminds me of 70s Kansas. It reminds me of this reminds me of Prague. This gives me that. Even though it's not jumping all over the place, this does. This fucking goddamn fucking record. Is unbelievable. It's unbelievable. And you're coming in at 92 minutes. Two oh. albums set. 92 oh. minutes, two albums set. And boy, you know what? I wish this was a triple fucking album, my friend. <laughs> I know it was a triple <laughs> album on vinyl, but I mean, I could have gone with 30 more fucking minutes. I love this fucking record, man. I fucking the Angel and the Gambler finds an airplane. <laughs> <laughs> I love this album, man. Uh, I'll, 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 to the end of time, it's in my, it's in my top five Iron Maiden albums of all time. It's cool. just about a 10. It sits at about a 9.6 for me. I've played it 150 times. I fucking love it. Best album by any person, band, musician in the world of the last 10 years. One of the highest honors in Iron Maiden and discography for me. I stand by Book of Souls, saw the tour three times. They were fucking amazing at their fucking ages. They hadn't lost anything, everything. They played so much. And anybody that saw this tour like, tries to tell me that that fucking jam session that they did on the Red and the Black Live, that was fucking heavy metal. I was sitting there with Mark Adams at one of the show, and we were just like, Jesus fucking Christ, man. This is beautiful. It is fucking, I that is fucking Iron Maiden. And you're going back to a kid that's seen them in the Number of the Beast, scaled down, the big arena tours with the big fucking ship and all that shit and all that. I've seen every era. This is fucking where it's at. Love this fucking record. 9.6 for me. All right. All right go, go ahead, guys. Shit on it. <laughs> go ahead, motherfucker. I'm not going to shit on it. Why you got to shit on that virtual X1 guy? <laughs> you your asshole. Okay, no, I'm not going to I'm not gonna shit on it. Uh, I'm not going to shit on it. And you know, it's cool that uh, you dig it that much. I, I don't. I'll just say right up front. Um, I don't think it's a bad album. Um, no, it's a good album. The, the you know, there's a lot of good stuff on here, and yeah, you know, that's one of the things with all these albums. Even if it seems like some of them, you know, I may be a little lukewarm on you know, the performances are always, almost always, you know, really solid. Still, there's you know, the songs are still, you know, uh, there's always good parts in the songs. It's just that sometimes it, they draw them out too long, or they go back to the well, you know, a couple too many times for me. Um. I know we've harped on it a lot tonight, but yeah, the, the length on this thing is just murderous for me personally to, to try to get through 90 minutes uh, of material where, and it's material that you need to pay attention to. It's we've got five of the 11 songs past the seven minute mark, but three of them past the 10 minute mark. This is a lot to digest. Wait, 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 and wait. Fuck you, Ryan Muldoon. Go ahead. Sorry. I got some of that rubbing <laughs> in my system. Go ahead. Yours. Um, <laughs> you breathed on me. Yeah. You know, this is when, you know, I, I remember, you know, it, it, when it came out, I played it a couple of times and it was literally just a, I don't have time to dedicate to this album. Uh, whatever was going on, you know, when it was released, it's what, 2015? Uh, what time of year was it? September 2015. Yeah. That would have been like, you know, right, you know, beginning of a semester for me. Uh, I did not have time to sit and you know, you know listen to you know double album Iron Maiden you know day in day giving it the deep listens it might would need um, and I shelved it and I just never felt the need to come back to it. Um, I don't know, now, not to interrupt you, but I don't know where the hell I found the time to listen to it was 150 fucking times complete and did like four <laughs> fucking tours and put out like fucking two albums yeah. and fucking all this, but I did. It, it, it's one <laughs> so, of those statistics. Like you've spent seven though, years of your life pissing by the time you're 75 years old. King has spent 13 years of his life listening to the Book of Souls. <laughs> truthfully, not to interrupt you, but truthfully, <laughs> it's all I played wherever we went 
every time it was my wife mm-hmm. loves it that much too so we were we were in, in agreement we went on tour we just listened to it that we, that's all we listened to on the whole fucking tour was that man no that's really <laughs> that cool <and> Bob Welch <laughs> that's cool yeah uh you know in terms of the cover yeah it's a cool looking Eddie it looks like Eddie I do have an issue with the cover, and it's the fact that there's no background behind the Eddie. Well, that's that's the only thing I'm saying is that I love the Eddie. That's what I yeah. said. The artwork well, that's is- all there is to love. The rest of it's just plain black. <laughs> there's more. There's more to it. There's, if you look at some of the inside art, they should have used more. Like I'm sure Marty's trying to dig in that bu- the book oh, yeah. box right right now. There's more to that whole scenario. It's just hard to fucking get to. Yeah. Well, you see what th- I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think you know, and well, around this time, and this is something I've you know commented on you know in the past a few times and it's around this time you know 2015 music is very much you know music has been a digital thing online you know for years before this but you know here you're really getting into you know, the spotify's and everything you know taking over and a lot of bands are simplifying their cover art to be just one central image so that you can quickly glance at a smartphone screen and see Oh, that's the that's the icon for this album. Sure, that's the icon for that album. There's no, you know, in a way, there's no point in putting in building a really complicated album with a lot of stuff going on in the background because no one's paying any attention to it. They're just glancing at the phone to see what track did Spotify play next, right. and they just want something simple, characteristic that can stand out and people can immediately recognize. That's a heart made of vegetable. I'm listening to Carcass. You just snap it. Make, they want to make a quick connection, and that it feels like that's what's happened. You know, here that that's, yeah, that's you look at it. It's Eddie, to listen in the carcass. <laughs> there's just nothing else to. There, we're not going to bother putting anything else on the cover because we just want to make sure people can glance at their cell phone and immediately see Eddie and know it's Iron Maiden. So, yeah, for a band that has such a rich history of really good detailed artwork that stokes the imagination with all kinds of little stuff, you know, here and there throughout it. It's you know it's kind of disappointing to see I agree. Blank it's background. What I'm saying more than anything is I'm happy to see fucking Eddie looking like fucking Eddie again, and I like the motif and or oh, yeah. of, of the artwork or where they're going with it. That's that's no. what I'm saying. Oh no, no that's that, good, that, good artist for sure. I like that part of yes, I like the Eddie. I just wish there was a background that would complement that really well done Eddie. Artwork. I agree. I w- I'm not I'm not arguing. I can't I can use more. I can yeah. use more art. That's quite okay. Um. Okay, so I have gotten through this one a few times this week. This was the one I definitely had played the least in the past, so I had to give this one some extra attention this week. There's some good music on here. Um, I, in particular, and it's funny because, yeah, some of the longer tracks here are ones I think are better. Uh, the Red and the Black, yeah, in particular, it's you know the second longest track. It's probably the second best track on the album for me. Uh, I really like it. Good guitar work throughout it. Good. The parts fit together. It does not feel like the song gets too that, repetitive. That guitar, yeah, that guitar section they go and play, man. It sounds like they're in the sky flying mm-hmm. heavy metal forever. It's bigger to me than the yeah. 200,000 Blood Brothers chorus without yeah, any it, without any vocal. <laughs> it's it's just it's just huge. It's just such a it's an emotional fucking thing that you just I can't you, you see me going nuts. I mean, it's mm-hmm. fucking emotional that to a level that very few Iron Maiden albums got to musically for me. Go ahead. I'm sorry. Yep. No, no, that's okay. But no, I agree. And, uh, you know, uh, the closer empire of the clouds, you know, you're pushing 20 minutes on that song. I'm someone, I know I've been complaining about the longer songs. That's a good song. That's a very good song. I like the piano intro. They take their time and develop that story very well through it. And it moves from part to part really nicely. It's definitely one of their better epic tracks. Nothing's ever going to surpass Rhyme of the Ancient Mariner, but this does really, really good. Um, right. So, yeah, it's the long songs here are working pretty well. Um, yeah, among the other stuff, you know, Tears of a Clown, the subject matter is cool. It's not my favorite song uh, on the album by a long shot. I don't know why. It just doesn't. Uh, maybe I, because yeah, like maybe it. because of the subject matter, it's kind of a downer. I don't know. There's something there that doesn't click for me. Um, but yeah, so you know, there's good performances here. There's songs that are put together well. It's just so bloody much material to try to get through that. I'm just not interested in you know digging through it uh, from start to finish over and over again. I, it's not bad anyway i like it. it i'm gonna you know give it you know one of you know these sort of you know yeah tentative you know kind of you know thumbs up grade here but i i 
you know, I've played it several times this week. You know, I've identified some songs I like. Um, but am I really going to circle back to this and you know pick it apart? It's cool that you have King. You know, that's really cool that it's a, you've got it ranked so high. I, there, I don't think there's enough here to draw me back to it and make me give it the dedicated listens. I think I'm going to be okay saying, "Yep, couple of cool songs. I'll keep. I'll, I'll remember those. I'll like those." But overall, dish, nah, I'm, I'm I'm not completely on board that giant airship <laughs> uh, from it. I want to give this about you know um, what have I given some of these others. Five there. I'm okay with Book of Souls being in that like six of ten kind of range. Better than average. Uh, can kind of like the album, but I know I know it sounds like a broken record at this point. <laughs> Look at the bottom this, of the screen, Alan. If you can it's too long. Oh, sorry. I'm, yeah, I flipped over to something else for a second because I'm also Look looking at the bottom of the screen. Something. That's funny. Yeah. Alan <laughs> for the brochure. <laughs> <laughs> Probably with the pamphlet. I, <laughs> The cliff it, note. It's funny because it is true, um, and I actually you know did this while looking while playing these newer albums. I've also gone back you know and looked at the run times on the albums we talked about last week in song lengths. And I said it earlier, but it, it really is a thing for me that once Iron Maiden hits goes over that six minute mark, I don't think they're the best songwriters. I don't think that's where they excel. This album has some great exceptions to that with the two tracks I named. It's not a hard and fast rule, but these albums are packing in so many long songs. I just, I don't think that's their strong suit as a band. And even going backwards, even going back as far as like somewhere in time and stuff, I, I think that's one of the issues I had with that. Let, that's let one of the first the album where they start doing the longer songs and they start to, they don't, they just don't click for me. Iron, me for me, me Iron Maiden's not their best when they're short that. What, and fast. What do you think? Of, what do you think of Speed of Light? What do you think of the, the shorter songs? I think Speed of Light's fucking phenomenal. I think it's fine. I it, it doesn't. I mean, that's wow. a song. Is it not? You just don't like the tune as much. I mean, that that's something that I could hear harking back to the days in a way. Same with Death or Glory to me. Death or Glory, I can hear it more. Yeah, the Speed of Light uh, is okay. Yeah, but no, it didn't blow me away on first. But yeah, some of these other albums, you know, when I've looked at them, uh, that yeah, it is. It's very often you know the shorter songs are the ones that you know, will stand out and grab me the most. I just think for me personally, it's where you know. Uh, Maiden does their best songwriting, um, cool. and this so, and, and, and in my opinion, like I said before, if you have fifty fucking songs and the album's a hundred thousand hours long, if they suck, it sucks. But if they have fifty thousand songs and the and the album's a hundred years long and they're all good, give me more, give me more until I don't want to hear it no more. And this one, mm -hmm. they got it right. They put all the melodies fit together, the arrangements are there, the riffs fit the songs. If they come back to something, it works. Very little mm -hmm. of that doesn't work. I mean, like I said, there's two that are a little bit down for me, and they're still way up on the donkey balls. But fucking, mm -hmm. it, it's just fucking. It, I, I mean, I just can't. I find it hard to say anything bad about this record for me. It's one of my absolute favorite Maiden albums. That's, That's cool. Awesome. Yeah, and you definitely and I know the you, album. I get you on your end. You know, you have two that really stand out and cool. I'm glad one of them was the fucking the, the Empire in the Clouds. That's fucking mm -hmm. good. yeah. You know, and it might be yeah, over time. I play it more and more of it does start to sink yeah. in. But as it stands now, it's yeah, I, I'm going to give it a six. I'm going to call it, you know, above average. But uh, yeah, again, I just I prefer okay. Maiden. And let in me ask you this, and you're, what, what did you give Somewhere in Time again? Somewhere in Time, I think I gave it a week seven or a very high six. Okay. Yeah, it was, so, so it's it, not far off from Somewhere in Time. Okay. Not far off from that, yeah. Which is fine. And again, that tells you we're talking about Iron Maiden here. We're not just comparing it to the whole world. We're talking, when I get to low threes, Iron Maiden three is better than most bands' eights. For me. <laughs> yep. But <laughs> uh, let's see. Selects one is not. <laughs> I, I've stumbled my way through this book long enough. So, uh, Marty, your turn. What do you think of this? <laughs> Welcome after, on, after the final frontier, this album was a breath of fresh air. For the it's fact definitely better than that one. That yeah. I spent, when this thing came out, I bought it the day I could get it. Um, at my local store and I went probably two weeks of listening to nothing but this. I haven't touched it since. <laughs> Did not really have the staying power for me, but listening to it today, I was reminded how good it is until I get to the song when the river runs deep. <laughs> that is basically Bruce singing over a piano for a good chunk of the song. It takes a long time for the song to get where it's going. 
this is little elements of you know them could maybe they could maybe self edit a little bit better but that song i could have lived without i just i get it these bands at this age they got a lot to say now, like look at metallica love them or hate them you know they put out that fucking two cd set it was not two cds worth of good music on it they could have <laughs> trimmed all the oh, fat and made one on it. <laughs> and one made one album that was pretty damn okay this album you couldn't have i mean because there's i mean like empire of the clouds is 20 minutes long but this is maiden you know kind of running wild being creative i can get behind it like king said it, i don't care if there's a hundred fucking long songs on here and if it's 10 cds if the songs are good i'm down with it but I just think it, you know, a band starts to get this age. They do we really need two CD sets? I mean, put out an EP afterwards. I don't know. I'm, I'm just or, or more singles. I don't know. But um, this is a good album. I really do enjoy it. It's a good seven point seven for me. I like <coughs> this album better. The still Bruce crushes. I'm I'm gonna hold on for the fact that Bruce's best vocal performance is right here. I agree. I think his vocal performance is better on that one for sure, but I like it with this one. If there's yeah. something about this one or everything just clicks for how it is, including the production for me right. on this book of souls. But I'm glad I revisited it today. I did not get all the way through the second CD before I ran out of time, but I'm gonna revisit, I'm gonna circle the, the old rig back around and check this out again. There it's a good go. album. But mm -hmm. man, after this album, they could have, you know farted on a mic for 85 minutes and it had been better than that garbage but yeah yeah something you mentioned there marty that's a really good point i do want to touch on uh you know yes these you know uh these you know bands from iron man's generation are definitely up there in years they've you know their legacy is cemented and yes you know i'm grousing about the length of these albums these guys can certainly go in and record as much or as little as they want to and it's nobody's business but theirs I, you know and you know, that's one of the things you know with kevin shirley i agree you know that yes he could do more as a producer to help round out their sound at the same time you know, he's probably in a bit of a tough spot how do you go in and tell you know a band you know that's you know been selling millions of records for 40 fucking years i think you should do it this way instead that 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 like, ship has sailed he's in a bad position yeah. He's in the well, position of being just the the knob guy. Yeah, but I mean, yeah, yeah. What you know, I'm happy about for Iron Maiden as a musician myself, at least I like to call myself one, fucking is that they can do whatever the fuck they want because they've earned yeah. the right to do it. And again, we talked about this last week. They get no radio airplay. Nobody ever gave them shit. They've no. earned this all. So to be able to put yeah. out a hundred minute record and have people like us and many other podcasts talking about Iron Maiden till fucking the cows come home shows mm -hmm. you these motherfuckers are loved even people that don't like them like them they can say i love them you know, I, I will the, always the, love maiden it's I the, love it's them. a girl at school you think's ugly but you really want to go out with her kind of thing <laughs> and that's fine and you're always going to have people that like the old stuff only like the diano or only like the first maiden when he sung about the devil or something like that or that's their fucking time because that's their high school and the best years of their life you're gonna have people sure. that kept continued on you're gonna have some people that respect them all the way through to the good the bad and the ugly you can have other people that just fucking wow man i really like what they got in their later years when they fucking and, you know, wrote these longer songs. There is people that are like to prefer that, and you're going to have people that like it all, and you have people that never like them. Blah blah blah, and that and that's the good of it all is that they're fucking, they're still here, and they're for whatever reason. And I think what they're, you know, where they are now is, like you said, they're at the peak, man. They're there. There's nobody big. I don't care. You can people can tell me Metallica outsold them and all. I don't give a fuck. Really Iron Maiden is the most popular heavy metal fucking band in the world. And they shit care. all over. But I thought they weren't heavy metal argument. anymore. I thought I they were a rock and roll band. Guy one time, I had this argument with this guy one time. He said, "Well, if Metallica sold more records, they're obviously more popular." I said, "No, it doesn't mean shit." I'm gonna tell you why. And he said, "Well, okay. Well, give me the example." I said, "I and I went and I found an Italian." fucking opera singer who sold over 200 million albums okay i couldn't even tell you his fucking name and i and i'm all over the music world okay we'll just call him rodrigo for the moment okay rodrigo sold 200 million albums okay kiss has sold about 110 million albums i told him by your logic rodrigo's more popular than kiss you're gonna you're gonna go on record and bet your balls they're bigger than kiss because i said i'll go show my grandmother a picture of rodrigo and she might have fucked him in her younger years <laughs> <laughs> But she knows who the fuck Kiss is. You know what I'm saying? That, that's horse shit. That's horse shit with that fucking analysis. Yeah, I know Metallica is big, but Iron Maiden is the biggest band on the fucking planet Absolutely. when it comes to heavy metal. 
Judas Priest could have been before him, and they used to be neck and neck, and they've gone way down to fucking four, fucking four fucking people on stage, fucking loop now to a, to almost a joke. I hate to say it, but that's the truth. And fucking Iron Maiden is still when they come to play all these shows that are going to happen. I've got tickets to two shows coming up next year. They're going to be sold out. Everybody's going to be there, and they're going to be reliving their childhood and bringing their children to say, this is what dad and this is what mommy listened to growing up. You're going to get another thing. Like Alan was saying earlier, it's another fucking phase, and you did too. Yep. <laughs> Brian's trying to be the comedian of the night. You're not. <laughs> <laughs> but but yeah, that's what I'm saying. And, and Iron Maiden has fucking done all this stuff. So for us to be here talking about it and stuff, it's phenomenal. <laughs> and I, I, could, I didn't even want to say I didn't like Virtual X1 or even put down Angel and the Gambler because I respect them because they've done a lot of good shit. Sure. And, and anybody this long along is going to burn a hot dog or two. On oh, the I mean, you, you, know? you can't, yeah. you, you're not going to be hitting a home run every album having a career this long. But you know, but and, and here's the thing I, I also, they take chances. They read the fucking, they read the reviews. They see what people say. They don't give a fuck with, that we say, well, Make shorter songs. Oops. Nobody gives a fuck. You know what I'm saying? Nobody gives a fuck. Iron Maiden's going to do what Iron Maiden wants to do. Kevin Shirley. Oh. Kevin Shirley has gone on record and said, "Look, dude, they've told me we're not. Do we don't. I'm not going back to that stuff. We don't. We've done it. We've done it to death. We did fucking 10, 12, 15 tours with all that shit. And they still play the stuff live to this day. It's not like they abandoned any of that stuff. They remember no. it all. They even come out still to this day with Eddie and the fucking Iron Maiden theme song as the big finale. It's all part of what they do." And what they're doing going forward, you either like it or you don't. There's plenty of bands that you lose, you know. We could use Black Sabbath as we already did this one a few months ago. You know, when the Tony Martin era came and stuff, people were like, this ain't Tony, this ain't Black Sabbath. It's Tony Omi and his mm -hmm. fucking hired band. It's Black Sabbath at this point because they fucking, the guy told him, we're only going to be able to sell records as Black Sabbath. People want to hear Black Sabbath. So this yep. is Black Sabbath. Yep. So it's black fucking Sabbath. And that's what I say about Iron Maiden. And not to get off the where we are with the beaten path, but fucking bottom line is fucking Iron Maiden is still fucking going strong. I mean, going strong. I mean, they don't even have to create a hundred minutes of music. They could put out a 20 minute record and get by on, you just go out and go through the motions. They still care enough to do it. Whether you, we, me, anybody likes it, they can, they like it. Yep. And that's what I fucking respect. And, and, and I and, do. And the last thing about it all is what they're doing right now, it couldn't be any more anti-commercial. It's not like they're trying to fit in with today. It's not like they're trying to fucking relive their fucking youth either. They're doing what they want to do. There's there's nothing commercial about this. And that's what I said. They earned to play this shit now they're playing, in my opinion. I agree with you, King. And they, you know, I feel bad because I this next album I slammed on in a video on my channel. That's it okay. isn't because you're, you're, as a fan, you're allowed to do that too. I paid for I paid for the album. And even if I didn't, I would still have to say what I hear. And and even though I don't like the album, doesn't mean I don't respect Iron Maiden. I've spent a million hours of my life listening to and pining over Iron Maiden albums. I mean, they're, they're I mean, even though it's a bad Iron Maiden record, it's Maiden record, and I appreciate the fact that they did it. You know and. They could do whatever the fuck they want. But anyway, yeah. let's talk about this album, Senju Senjuku, Senjitsu, or whatever the hell it's called. I got an advance of this one before I saw any artwork or anything. I got an advance tape of this. And then when I got the advance tape, about five minutes later, I Googled it and I found the artwork. And I said, wow, this is neat. You know, different kind of weird title. I tried to figure out what it was all about before I went into the music. And then um, before I sat down to that album... I was flipping around looking for that album artwork and all of a sudden the writing on the wall came on the fucking YouTube as an advance, you know, this fucking Iron Maiden fan club exclusive, blah, blah, blah. Mm -hmm. I put it on. I fucking appreciated the hell out of it. I thought it was very Southern rockish. People, yeah. I remember one guy saying, that sounds like Bon Jovi, fucking Blaze of Glory. What, because it has a fucking acoustic guitar in it? I guess he invented the acoustic guitar. It reminded <laughs> me of fucking, it reminded me of fucking the Outlaws. When I first heard it, I heard the Outlaws. I heard the 70s Southern rock. Mm -hmm. I heard a little bit of that. Yeah. I also fucking heard a little, you know, I heard a little bit of fucking like even April wine in the song. I was like, man, this is more hard rock, this tune. It was it was mm -hmm. off the off the cuff. I appreciated it. I liked the video for it. I went out and I the said, video hey, the video was killer. The video was killer. We talked I about it on a lot of us got together and talked about it on Facebook. Some people immediately appreciated the hell out of it. Me, a guy named uh, James Danzo, good buddy of mine, liked it. And other people, I remember a guy, Greg, was like, this is Bon Jovi. It's not good. And to, again, we all get our names and our own opinions. I don't, I don't disrespect nobody for not liking it, and I'm not going to fucking just clamor to everybody that does. Giving you my opinion, I thought it was a good song. So I had the album then. 
So I'm going to go into the fucking album. I put the damn thing on and the title track thing came on at first and it was weird. I was like, man, this is like tribal. This is fucking the like drums of voodoo and shit. I'm like, wow, this is weird. I guess this, this Eddie here is, 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 is some kind of fucking Japanese thing, but yet there's nothing on here that takes me into this fucking, you know, artwork looking kind of vibe. This came on as it went along. It never really turned into a song. It kind of stayed as kind of like a brooding tribal thing. If anything, yeah, that's great. I mean, I think that's neat. That's a killer cover. Yeah. I think it's a killer neat. artwork. And, um, I liked the tune. I thought the tune was cool. I liked the production. I really liked the way the, the Tom sounded. I thought it was kind of neat for Nico to do that. It was, you know, no no credit for Nico ever. So don't know if somebody else told him what to play or he came up with it and just didn't get a credit. Whatever. Stratego came on. Thought it was a good tune. I thought it was more of the standard Iron Maiden. I was like, here we go. Here's the fucking four and a half minute, you know, I'm going to call it a rocker, but like the uplifter kind of thing. Good stuff. Writing on the wall was to follow. Already liked that song. Still do. I think it's a neat song. Fucking uh, Lost in a Lost World. I think it's pretty cool. I think it's a bit long. I do like it. It's, I don't love it. I think it's pretty fucking cool, though, for the most part. This this album here, and I'm going to give credit to Amir Syed, who told me this, and I agree. Very soundtracky. Very soundtracky. Puts you in headspace as you go through it. A few other people mm -hmm. have told me that, too, but that's who originally said those words, and I agree with it a lot. Um then, then I remember reading that one of these tunes was going to sound like the Moody Blues. Now, to say that out loud, you're what are we going classic rock with Iron Maiden? They are close to 70, if some of them aren't 70. And um, we're getting to it, Craig. Craig, that is my favorite song on the album, too. But I'm not quite there yet, my friend. But I'm looking down, so I guess I'm reading. Um, I hear the Moody Blues. I hear the fucking the total Moody, Moody Blues of fucking in, in, on the, well, the Days of Future Past is a fucking <laughs> it's a goddamn Moody Blues fucking thing lost in a lost world i think it's cool then you get to the time machine craig i'm there now my friend and i thought it was really cool i hear some jethro tall in there i hear some really cool fucking stop start kind of stuff i thought it was neat okay that's record one you're looking at 40 minutes and 15 seconds okay you got another 41 minutes coming alan and 38 seconds just to boot uh. yep. darkest hour death of the soul the death of the salts the parchment hell on earth I like this whole side. I'm not a big fan of Death of the Celts. I don't really like that. It has almost that jig again. It's good, but it's not great. Darkest Hour, I think, is very, very creepy. The parchment is very dark. And Hell on Earth is an absolutely stunning closer for this record. It's got such a fucking tie-in. Again, we're talking like a book of souls that Iron Maiden's getting old. We're getting old. Fucking our friends are fucking dying around us. It's, 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 this is, if I was ever to say, and I tell people all the time, death metal isn't always grr, 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 grr. It's fucking, this is death metal. This is a very dark, depressing, downbeat record from start to finish. It makes me wonder where their headspace truly is. Now, if ever there was an album I thought would be their last one to date, it would be this one. I never felt that with Final Frontier or any of that kind of stuff. 60 yeah $60 on the fucking vinyl I don't blame you I don't blame you records are expensive these days but Ow. I love this thing I can't wait to hear some of this stuff live I want to see how it goes I think it's a really cool record it's not Book of Souls Book of Souls is is one of the most special records in my heart to Iron Maiden but I do really appreciate this record this is one I want to sit down in front of my stereo more and crank it and get lost in it this is a headspace thing this is almost a Smithsonian go there put your head in one of those chairs in DC pop your head back and look at the fucking world through some kind of thing, the planets or something, and just lose your mind in your life. I really feel that with this album. And I know it's not all that kind of stuff in there, but that's what I get out of it. I get a very haunting emotional ride. And that's something now for Book of Souls and this one I have never thought of with Maiden. As I guess it's Elder, this is where they're coming with this stuff. It just fucking, it, it just, it, it, it touches my heart in a heartwarming way. It touches my heart in a fucking eerie way. It makes me think about the past. It makes me think about the future. It makes me think about the world now. And for them to have basically have written this record before COVID even happened, because this record sounds like it was written about COVID or just the world today. This album was written and completed before COVID was even known, which is odd. They went into a room and, I, and, I, and some people on here that are right now are like, yeah, no, this shit sounds like shit. It's boring. It's long. It's fucking it's forgettable. And fucking other people are going to appreciate it but the, the, the story is they basically went and wrote this fucking thing and just recorded it on the spot i don't know if they've ever done that but they literally played it 
recorded it. And I know as my own musician and stuff, when I'm playing drums, it's stiff, it's new, it's what it is. So you're probably getting some of that with Nico and stuff. I mean, you, you branch out the more you play it, then it comes sure. into, into, you know, mental memory. Kind well, everybody's got to learn the song. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I do. I like the fucking haunting keys, which again, we're back to that. They put these, these drops of notes that sometimes offset. I like the use of the three guitar on this album. I think Bruce's voice is produced horribly. Oh, it's bad. It's very, it's very low in spots. He sounds and, rough, and he does. He definitely sounds aged on this one. He definitely yep. does not have a lot of power. But I like it because of the the content of the lyrics. I like it. I feel like it's a fucking older elder. I don't want to say elderly, but older man telling me through song stories. And I really, I like this album. Obviously, I can't tell you about the tour. It hasn't happened yet, but. I really like this record. I think it's cool. It's a step down from Book of Souls, but these people that are fighting about it on the internet, I mean, hey, I appreciate a good fucking fight. Ali versus Fraser, that's fine. And you guys may come around and say, oh, King, you're much more than me, and that's totally cool. Because I've had, you know, again, the donkey balls. I'll be the left, you'll be the right, and we'll just fucking let it happen. But fucking, <laughs> I just think it's fucking cool. I think it's a cool record. I, I whatever Maiden does now, I'm going to give it a chance. I'm not going to love it all. We're only two. We're only two albums now re- removed from fucking Final Frontier, which to me is the second worst Maiden album ever. But to follow it up with one of my favorite top five ever shows me that it's just going to be one of these things where, as they get older, they're going to try what they want, and some of it's going to work more for me. Some of it's going to work more for other people. Uh, bottom line, I'm giving this one a fucking. I'm going to give this one an. Uh, I'm going to give this one an eight. I'm going to give this one an 8.1. Wow. 8.1. Okay. Wow. And I think and I think out of every Maiden album, this is this one is really one of the ones that's only its own, like X Factor. I think there's no other album like it. True. I will agree with that for sure. Mm-hmm. And you probably like the fact that there's not an album like it. <laughs> but we'll, let, <laughs> we'll, we'll let you get to your turn after this man, Alan, <laughs> below says something. What do you think, Alan? Ah. Uh. I mean, my thoughts on this one are going to be pretty consistent with what my thoughts have been so far. You've got uh, 10 tracks on here. Seven of them exceed the seven-minute mark. They're almost abandoning any kind of short-form songwriting at this point. And that's you know, that obviously doesn't sit particularly well with me when it comes to the Iron Maiden discography. Uh, it'll be no surprise to anyone. Two, two of the songs that I think are the better songs on here are the two shortest ones. Uh, Stratego, I like. Uh, Days of Future Past, I like. Um, I agree, Greg. And some of the longer songs are good. It's not that they're not. Uh, Hell on Earth, yeah, that's a good song. I like that as the closing number on here. And, you know, it's just, you know, what's the old internet now? This album be too damn long. I'm sorry. There's a lot of stuff on here. There's a lot of good performances on here. Uh, Craig mentioned that, yeah, you know, there's some you know, really, you know, moving solos, really emotional solos. Absolutely. It's not that anybody's performing badly. It's not that they're writing bad songs. It's that the songs just drag out longer than is necessary to, you know, do their thing for me personally. Um, it, it's a nitpicky thing that is really only maybe matters to like the CD format. This album could have fit on one CD if they had trimmed like three lousy middens worth of stuff off of it. And nobody can tell me that there's not three minutes worth of stuff here and there. Every intro of the last of the second disc. That you, you could have trimmed. Yeah. You could have trimmed just 30 seconds here, 45 seconds there, 20 seconds there, gotten it onto a single disc. And then people wouldn't be having, you know, pay like Melanie said, yeah, this is, been an expensive item to buy and you know some of it depends on the format you get but yeah just even for the cd it's there's not two cds worth of stuff on here this could have been a one cd release very easily very very easily and they didn't take the time or effort or bother or care to trim that extra little bit of fat out in the uh, you know marty you've mentioned you know a lot of the interviews they said up front, basically every single thing they thought of and recorded, they put into this album. Yeah. And I don't think that's a particular a sign of a well-built album. No. That's not a sign of a well-built album. That's a sign of, uh, and again, again, we've already said it, they're elder statesmen. They can do whatever the fuck they want. Absolutely. And at, and at this late stage, you know, in their careers and lives, I kind of get that. I'm not really going to harsh on them for making that decision. We don't know how many albums they have got left in them. I mean, at this 
right, you know, at this age, you can wake up tomorrow when these guys can just pass away in their sleep and there doesn't have to be a big reason or a long drawn out battle with a disease. It can just happen at this stage. So right. if they re- if they're recording this stuff and they want to make sure it gets out there as soon as possible, I get that. Um, see, see, to me, this album, the length of these songs work for me because I feel these are totally a soundtrack thing, and I don't mind that it goes and goes and goes. It's when it's fair. it's when it's Angel and the fucking Gambler, and it's just fucking mm-hmm. bullshit. That's bullshit. These ones at least have melody and emotion direction behind them with a lyrical thing that causes you to fucking close your eyes and lose it. I don't want to say Pink Floyd, but I'm going to say fucking Pink Floyd-ish in its way. And Jethro mm-hmm. Tull is on yeah. hand. And, stuff yeah, like I that. and I think these songs are fine. And I think sometimes if you cut, the if, if a great riff is fine, but if it's cut too short, you don't get the full vibe and the feeling they're going for. And if that's where they are right now, that's where they are. And for me on this album, especially, the lengths work for me. I don't go, God damn, it's going on and on and on much. There is a couple times I, I do mm-hmm. think that, but I think they've got it under control on this one. I guess you obviously disagree, and that's fine. I, I respect that. The Parchment 1239, I actually really like that song. It's one of Harris's best in a while for me. Death of the Celts mm-hmm. is just one that doesn't do a lot for me in the context mm-hmm. of the album. Just I don't care for the, the, the whole vibe of the song but i think yeah. the links are on this record are fine and i'll I'll say this let's just say for a, a minute that iron maid's next album comes back and it's fucking oh my god look at eddie man and it's something to do with the devil you know just because they've done they've repeated themselves other ways musically and stuff they get back to that and almost the whole record is four and a half minute songs do you really honestly truly think in your mind and i know how i feel that that would be an honest iron maiden now at that point or do you think that's just playing to the crowd in Iron Maiden's case, uh, I would actually I would default and assume it would be an honest album because if it's not, I don't think Iron Maiden would make it. Well, that's why I don't think they'll ever make it because it's not in their fucking frame of mind. And I, you know, and they may not. Me, this is an honest record. Whether you like mm-hmm. it or not, that's fine. But I mean, I, if this came out and it was like Pan, like we'll use Judas Priest in the '90s, they wanted to be fucking Pantera. They wanted to keep up with the times. You know what I'm saying? I want to fucking. Mm-hmm. I want to give any band that like goes on their own. Voivod, for example, Nothing Face came out. They got a little bit of popularity. They needed to do Nothing Face too to go to the next level. What they do? They did something mm-hmm. totally not that. And went to Angel Rat and yep. fucking and fucked up the chance to get bigger yep. by keeping their well, music. Let, let's technique. let's be honest. Voivod were never built or geared to be the next. No, no, I, no, I agree. But I'm never. saying if, yeah. if there ever was a shot, yeah. if there ever was a shot, that was the mm-hmm. shot. Because we both know, we all three know that Soundgarden and Faith No More were the openers on that tour, and they took off and became multi-millionaires. At least Soundgarden did, and made some good money. Let's just say that. And I saw Voivod that tour. I saw that tour, thing. and and I hate to say it, I was there to see Voivod. Soundgarden blew everybody off the stage. I they hate were... to say it. I hate to say it, but I was on tour with them for a week, and Soundgarden and Faith No More made me fucking physically ill. They were so bad. Uh, <laughs> bad. Say hey, what you want. Their own, Marty. You know that. The, my I, I never heard them at that point, and the crowd went fucking bananas, I, I and the band them. was swinging. I was yelling, "Put your shirt on! Stop writhing on the floor!" To fucking Soundgarden, <laughs> and fucking and Mike Patton was a complete dick. He was a dick face. He was making fun of. They did War Pigs. He was changing the lyrics, making fun of Black Sabbath, saying yeah, how Black that. Sabbath sucks. And but whatever, just not to sidetrack. But that's what I'm thinking about with Maiden. This is where mm-hmm. they are. This oh, is where people will say all these long songs. Well, what the fuck do you think they're gonna do now? They're sure as fuck not gonna go right running free. Well, and that's but and that's you're exactly right. That's where they're at, and I know where that's where they're at, and that's why I didn't run out and buy this album. I'm just like I kind of know I, what and, and I respect you for that because, like I said last week, people ch- checked out a long time ago if you didn't like this style. Mm-hmm. If you come back and check in and say, was this on another one of those? Oh, I'm still out. I'm still out. I'm still out. You're waiting for something that, as an Iron Maiden fan, you should know ain't coming back, you know? Oh, yeah. Some people are fucking, you know, not 24-7 fans, and they're just, you know, your average Joe on the street. I get that, too. They just want to They want to remember that minute in time. Man, I remember when I was a kid playing that shit, smoking reefer sure. in my car at 16, whether it was Aces High or Run to the Hills or whatever, and that's all they know. But you're like, these motherfuckers are still around, and they put it, you're like, what? This shit sounds like fucking sissy-ass piano. This ain't mm-hmm. heavy metal. Well, motherfucker, 40 fucking years have passed, man. Where, yep. where the fuck have you yes, been? They have. <laughs> yep. Yes, they have. But yes, yeah, so, I mean, yeah, I, I know what yeah, we I think we've, yeah, we've seen, back. Sure. Yeah, with you know with yeah, you know, with Maiden at this point, you're exactly right. You know, they know where they want to be. They're these albums, well, you know, we rate them differently. Yeah, I mean there's 
there's been some, you know, cons- definitely some consistency, at least since Matter of Life and Death, and that's 15, 16 years or so now. Right. So, yeah, we know what they're going to be. I'm going to check them out as they come out, but I'm not going to run out and buy them on the day because I, 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 I it's not that. my era. For, it's not my favorite era of Iron Maiden. It's just not. And, um, again, just it's nitpicky. Um, you know, I did go to the, uh, you know, a couple of weeks after it came out, I'd heard a couple of singles, uh, you know, Riding on the Wall came out and you're exactly, you're dead on with the, yeah, it's got that Southern rock flavor to it. It doesn't blow me away, but it was interesting to hear Maiden do that. It's not bad at all. It freaked people out, confused people, sure, didn't it? It, it did for some folks. You know, it, it wasn't bad. You know, it was not, it, again, didn't, I didn't go like, oh my God, and, you know, must have this, but it's just like, okay, that's different. Um, but yeah, when I went to the record store and so I was like, wait, what do you mean I got to pay like twenty six ninety nine to get a two CD set of this? I don't know. I'm, I'm not paying you $26. I don't know where the hell you guys are shopping, man. The CD where I was was 12 bucks, man. Sealed. I mean, around here, folks only had like, you know, the, the fancy one. And yeah, I mean, it was, I don't know if I saw it for under 20 bucks. Co- I think that's more of anything. It's a COVID thing where they're limited to what they're getting in. And of course, they're going to go for the most expensive because whatever's be. there, people are going to buy. That's a shame that girl that posted below had to pay that. That's the world of vinyl these days. Everything's a fucking ripoff. Yeah. And that's, you know, that's a shame. I, I wouldn't care if that was a band I liked or not. I wouldn't have to buy that. I mean, the the new Halloween was the same. That's now my you know, huge one. I'd love to death. And they had it at the local stores like forty nine ninety nine for new Halloween on vinyl. I'm just like, no. Hey, I, I bought the final. I bought the the Euro CD and I bought the Japanese CD for sixty bucks. So fuck Ooh. me. Your your steel <laughs> is more true than mine, sir. Fuck me. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, uh, yeah. Getting back onto Senjutsu here. Um, as far as the you know with other stuff, there are just times where you know some things that you've said working. You know, there are times where they're you know falling back into things that feel very comfortable. We've heard some of these same beats and patterns before. They do it like in after uh, in Lost in a Lost World, uh, where you know the song starts off kind of cool, kind of interesting. And then all of a sudden you're like, wait a minute, I, I, I've heard this a bunch of times before or a very minor variation on it from Iron Maiden. And and so you and and so over the next five minutes it's just like eh, I don't need to hear five more minutes of this song. Um you know, where, where the album really just, you know, does go kind of, you know, screech to a halt. It is that it's that block of three songs that end the album. They're all, you know, it takes you over 30 minutes to get through the last three songs of the album. I like Hell on Earth. I have trouble remembering the parchment because it's buried between these other two long songs that I sort of, you know, it's hard for me to zoom in on it unless I play just that one song by itself. Right. That, Look at that. You, the, the arrangement of the record, the order. Yeah, I, I it's uh, I as I've, I've established, I'm just having three songs run that long is I, it's not the format I'm wanting to hear Iron Maiden do. Even though, again, there's lots of good instrumentation on here. There's lots of good solos. There's lots of good performances. There's nothing I play this, and there's nothing like that stinks. That's horrible. I, ugh, I don't like that. Oh, that completely misses the mark. It's more just like, well, you know, it's. It's, yeah, Iron, it's, good, it's Iron Maiden in 2021. It's exactly it kind of what I expected it, it to it be. It all stays within the, the realm of, of one kind of like vibe to the record, which I appreciate because, you know, mm-hmm. like for example, we keep coming back, Goddamn Angel and the Gambler. It just seems so out of place, you know, and, and that, that can fuck a whole record up to me. It, really it can. can fuck a whole record up. You or know? a whole single. <laughs> right. I mean, you know, you know, here's a quick thing. Fucking Dio, Dio still to the end, he claimed Rainbow in the Dark fucked that first solo album up. He hated it. Never wanted it on there. Hated the song. It was a hit. He definitely hated the keyboards on it. He was like, man, I love the soul album, Minus Rainbow in the Dark. Played it for years. Made his most popular thing he ever sang on. But yeah. fuck Indy. He never liked it. You know? So, but, yep. that, but I did. And it all comes down to the person. There's somebody right here. Got to be somebody. If they want to type at the bottom of the screen real quick. Is there somebody in here that likes the song Angel and the Gambler? If so, just say, hey, I like it. Hey, to more power to you. I mean, there's probably somebody like, out there not, who did. Not likes it to like likes it to burn it and light it on fire and watch it burn, but really likes to listen to it. <laughs> and if you listen to it, like it, there you're, there's chances are that the stuff in your record collection I'm probably not going to be into. <laughs> <laughs> Could be. Don't you yeah. think I can save your life? <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> All right. So yeah. what, was your, what was your rating on it, Alan? Uh, at this point, and in a way, the album still feels pretty new to me. Because again, I didn't run out and buy it right away. You know, I heard the singles, I watched the videos. 
But, you know, I've been slow to come around to it because I know it's not really going to, you know, blow me away. At this point in time, I will give it, uh, to be honest, I want to give it just something kind of right there in the middle of the road. I'll give it a strong five or a very, very low six. There's nothing wrong with the album. It's not not an album. No, no, and it's not. It's not, I'm not saying it's a bad album. It's in that, it's a C to me. It's kind of, it's an average record. It's what I expect it to be. It's you know it's not the Iron Maiden for me really at this era, but it's by no means horrible. It's just not the format I prefer. Right. And, I, and, I, and I get that. Maiden. One thing I one thing I appreciate about this, and probably most people that are watching us, is we all know all of it. You know, we know from Iron Maiden to right now, so you can compare it. There's some people that I, I've only I've never heard Killers or that, and you can find that shocking. But we we kind of realize mm-hmm. we're like fifty year old men. Yeah, <laughs> so yep. it happens. Yeah. So yeah, okay, this, Marty, one, Marty. this one for me is very mi- very middle of the road. There's there's lots of good music in here, uh, but it's not something I'm going to really get into. I don't think. I'm glad. But yeah. Now it's Marty's turn. Stay with it, brother. Stay with it. So you know that uh, epi- uh, that scene in The Grinch who stole Christmas, where they uh, put a, uh, a magnifying glass up to his heart, and there's this little teeny tiny heart there. Well, mine would have a, a little picture of Senjutsu where my heart was, a little teeny tiny Senjutsu. Um, I feel real bad after King's passionate defending of this album. I've listened to this album four times, and that's not a lot in the grand scheme of things. The first two times were in the same day, and I sat in a chair and stared at the speakers as I listened to it because that's the best way to listen to music is absorb it, is to sit and actually be one with the record. Sit there. If you're playing it on wax, you watch the record spin around or you sit, you stare at the speakers when the CD's playing. And my God, I was so, I struggled all four times getting through this album. I like the fact that it sounds like Iron Maiden. There's some good shit on here. There really is. There's some good music on here. There's a uh, side, uh, the second disc. There's a couple solos that my ears perked up. on. That's a fucking nice, sweet Mm -hmm. spot solo. Really well done, tasteful. But my mm-hmm. God, Bruce sounds the way he's produced on this. He sounds tired. He sounds old. The guy's gone through shit with the cancer stuff. I'm not going to sit here and and fucking throw darts at him for that. Fine. It's just, you know, then you read that we didn't waste a single. Every riff we wrote went into this album. Man, you can tell. There's a, like th- these guys are like earth, wind and fire as far as people in the band. There isn't one motherfucker that said one in Janet. <laughs> yeah. Hey guys, this song sounds like the last three songs or there's like two instances on here where a guitar harmony comes up, comes up that is a guitar harmony they've used on other albums. Almost mm-hmm. note for fucking note, same key, same notes. I'm just like, what? Yeah, I mean, this is for sure. a complete rehash. And I, I like the, I get the, you know, older guys playing older metal, there's a bit of that feeling there. I can respect that. I can get behind it. And I do. I'm going to say, I'm going to put more time into this album before I never listen to it again. Because like, when I reviewed it, I shelved it. I'm like, I'll probably never grab this album ever again. I'm going to. I, You know, I'm going to I'm gonna I'm feed off of King's passion for this a little bit and come at it again. Because, God, I just, <laughs> I, I just, I hear, I listen to it. I've got my thoughts on it. And I see so many fucking people praising this album. It's making year end lists. People are saying this album is amazing, but yet say the new Halloween album is boring. I'm just like, you got. I, I didn't say I didn't say the new Halloween was boring. I said it sucks. Oh, I, I know you did. I know no, you I, did. I, but... I, I just do shit. <laughs> we we do that because we're fifty. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. But it's just it blows me away. And I I look at this album and I listen to this album and I'm like, this is a band that's in the twilight of their career which is, it bums me out because I've been there early on. I wasn't there since the beginning, but I jumped on pretty early in my life and Maiden's been a part of my life forever. And it, and even if it's a bad Maiden record, I'm going to check it out. I'm going to buy it. I got to have it on the shelf, even if I like it or not. <laughs> but this is a band, the twilight of their career. And all these people are saying how much they love this record. Am I hearing the, am I hearing it wrong? I mean, it just, I listen to this and it strikes me as a band that it got lazy and they're they're riding on the brand recognition there's so many new people in like vet maiden right now and so many people they just spent 65 dollars on a record at fucking walmart for this they're going to do whatever it takes to like it 
<laughs> because they invested almost a hundred fucking dollars on this. That's record. not fair. I know it's not fair, but that, 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 that mentality plays into it. I don't know, man. I, there's some moments on this. I like, I need to spend more time with the record. Four times. Isn't enough for an 85 fucking minute record. It's too long. Again, I really, I really would say, Marty, it's a head, it's a headspace when you got to be in the right headspace. There's a couple of these ones we've talked about tonight. It's not one you can just put on and enjoy. I mean, yeah. it's totally different. It's not. Know? It really I mean, is. I'll, not. I'll, I'll mm-hmm. use it because I keep seeing it every time we do this. You're awakening the guardian back there. I don't think that's one you can just put on all the time and enjoy. Right. I, and I've got I'm I've more got of a night, I'm night on Brocken thing. It's like more of a party thing. That one you got to kind of get into a fantasy land, you know. And I and the reason why that album probably resonates so much with me. I connected with it at a young age. I've got tons of nostalgia with that record. I think I mean, that's a lot what Maiden of... does for me. I yeah. think that's the same thing, especially yep. Book of Souls, that what I was telling you earlier. It just makes me think of my life, my fucking family, you know, people that are alive, people that have died, music, yep. and my list to all of it, the good, the bad, and everything in between. And that's something that not a lot of bands do for me. Maiden's one that's always been able to pull those melodies out, and on that record, more so than most anything, and Triumph. Triumph's another band that can just pull these crazy emotional music out. There's yeah. not many other ones that do that to me like that. But go ahead. But I'm you, sorry. No, no, don't be. And and again, if you like this album and you love this album, I'm happy for you, man. I, I I'm not going to sit here and 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 dog down people that don't like this album because great, I'm glad you do because there's a lot to like about it. It's a big, it's a heavy album. It's very depressive. It's very long. But I just looked at all the technical, imp, you know, the shit. And when I started hearing harmonies that I've heard several other times on other Maiden records, I just kind of rolled my eyes. I'm like, really? You've got three guitar mm-hmm. players. You got four songwriters, five songwriters in the band. You're rehashing these riffs. I mean, I get it. They're kind of staple. They're kind of staple Maiden riffs. You know, I mean, it's kind of the the feel, the sound. But it just seemed it just seemed like they were uh, digging too hard on their past a little bit. And, you know, you know, this album, there's a lot more life and dynamics on this album. This is trash. I'm sorry. This album is great. It's a great album. This is a great fucking album. I mean, I don't know what happened here. I think there should have been some more self editing. I mean, if you're going to go 85 minutes on an album, great. Give me some, ups and downs give me play with my emotions a bit don't just shit my wheaties the whole time (laughs) with the same old fucking maiden sad maiden riffs and i don't know man i i feel bad i feel bad i just i'm (laughs) not hey what do you what do you spit spit out what are you what are you rating it this is my third least favorite maiden album this is probably a three three point two so three here would you give it a would you give it an allen a five I'll give five. I'll go slightly above five. I'll give like five and a half. And I'm, and I, and I'm, a, I'm a high eight. <laughs> yep, yep. No, and it's great. And like I said, we all hear the same thing differently. And no, this may be cool. the one we've got the widest spread on. Yeah, no, yeah, I was thinking great. the same thing. It's cool. I think it's yeah. cool like that. I mean, you know, we all like, mm-hmm. I mean, there, there's ones people are going to like and not. You're seeing this truthfully down there. Yep. Mm-hmm. And it's in it. I like the fact that it sounds like Maiden. Fuck you, Ryan Muldoon. <laughs> <laughs> it here's sounds like respect, Maiden. Here's your respect in the trash can. <laughs> <laughs> but um, yeah, I mean, that's I'm kind of circle back around and I might be eating all sorts of crow and a couple hats. Hey, uh, some well, some but... records grow on you as you get older. I mean, I've for me, <laughs> honestly, music for the most part, when I, I mean, when I first hear it, I either really like it or I just don't. And I've people have done that before. Like, is there an album you've ever heard you didn't like it and later on you like 90% I, of them? <laughs> there's really been, I can't even think of one because when I tell people, no, not really, there might be something like today. Like, I'm like, I'm surprised it still holds up as good as it did. Like, and that was Dance of Death for me today. Yeah. I was like, wow, this is still pretty fucking cool because Brave New World, I was hoping was going to sound better to me, but it just didn't. I was yep. just like, man, it's still boring to me. And that silent planet thing's drive me nuts. Yep. But nothing, we all agree one thing, there's no worse song than Angel and the Gambler, man. Out of all <laughs> the Iron Maiden we've done oh, well, over six Lightning man, Strike Twice is a weeks, fucking man. close Angel second. and the Gambler is the all-time worst song. But can, can, let's do this. Worse, let's do worse this than now. Lost for Words? Let's, which, okay, and we already know mine because I said it. Which, yeah, Lost for Words is bad, too. But what's your, Marty, what's your favorite all-time Iron Maiden song? Favorite all time Iron Maiden song. Well, I'd have to go. I'd have to go with two eras. Um, one, yeah, one song, my friend. Bruce Dickinson era. I'm going to say Flash of the Blade. 
which right, I know it's people gonna be your old time it's, it's got a, it's got a fucking Trump anything of any era over Diano and Blaze. You're going Flash of the Blaze, your favorite, Alan. I think I'm going to if I if I get just one, fair, okay. Uh, I'm going to pick Revelations. Okay, oh, that's Revelations. a good song too. That's a great song. And mine is and mine is Children of the Damned. That's awfully good. Yep. There's so, no bad tracks named here. Let's let's go right there. Album fucking three, four, five. Mm -hmm. So that's 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 our highest mark right there. I would have Which, to say Killers is my all time favorite Maiden song. Okay, that's your favorite song. Song, yeah. Okay, well you just passed Flash of the Blade then. All right, so yeah. yours is, okay. Well, then yours. What's he doing, Alan? Cheating? <laughs> You're a teacher. <laughs> you cheating? Give him a Flash of the Blade is my favorite. Gold song. star off of him. <laughs> Okay, Diano, it's Killers, Dickinson, it's which. Okay, then what's your blaze? Oh, um, do, I, do we have to pick one? <laughs> You're gonna get Marty too. Hold on, I gotta look at the track I'll listing. Back to him. Okay, for for me, I'll, my favorite uh, Diano song. Uh I would probably, I'd probably say. Killers too. Kill yeah, killers for me too. For Diano singing and for Blaze for me, it's it's Judgment of Heaven. For me. What about your Diano, Alan? And we'll let him think his Blaze through. That one is very tough because I love so many of them so much. Um yeah, that ugh. let me look at the track lists real quick. I got them right here. So, Diano, we've got. I love Prowler to death. Me too. Uh, Remember Tomorrow is cool. Me Running too. Free oh, yeah. is fun. Now, you know, Phantom of the Opera is, you know, an all time classic. <laughs> Strange <laughs> World is cool. We're starting um, the whole reviews over again. It's like, yeah, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and that's the problem with picking the Diano song. Um, and you murders in the room orgs on the second one. Killers is on the second one. I can't pick up one single Diano song. I'm just. I, okay. I throw in the towel. I cannot pick a single okay. Diano song and say that it's better than all the others. There's too Nothing many from Blaze. Good. Nothing from Blaze. Ah, I, I, know, I can pick some. Give me a second. I'll pick some. On a whim. Okay, Marty, you have yours while he's I'll, looking. I'll go with Sign of the Cross. I love the first three songs off of X Factor. I even yeah. like Man on the Edge. Falling down. Judgment of Heaven for me, and then Lord of the Flies is second for me. So Alan didn't get one, so I get to throw Lord of the Flies in there. Uh, I might go with Lord of the Flies. Mm -hmm. us, <laughs> winning us. Well, ahead. yeah, probably Lord of the Flies. Lord of the Flies. Alan picks Lord of the Flies. I will pick Lord of the Flies for my boys. Yep. Hey, we're cool. We're fucking cool. We knew every fucking album, even before we picked up this Wikipedia <laughs> on this fucking phone. Yep. <laughs> Purgatory so rules, too. If we get to pick only one favorite album, no dividing it up by eras or anything like that, one 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 maiden album to rule them all, uh, what do we pick then? Peace of mind. One album to rule them all, Killers. Killers? Killers. I, my my knee-jerk reaction is still to say peace of mind, even though there's a peace couple... Peace of fucking mind. There's a couple others that are so close. <laughs> I think I gotta say peace of mind. And yep, yes, it is. Yep. Correct. We are, we already know everybody's least favorite, so there's not much. I don't uh, get why people call Flash the Blade a weak song. I love that fucking song. I don't like it either, Tim. What the fuck? the opera is awesome. <laughs> Flash the Blade's one that doesn't stick with me. I don't dislike it, but I, it, it's. I know some people love the song like Marty does. It, I don't know what it, it is about that song. I just song love that me. song. So just remember this song. two songs in a row about fucking fencing in a row in a <laughs> row so let's you know you can go there and then we got the new one there's two songs that are 1200 minutes each you know we have our break you know, from everything we've done well what we now need is like you know uh one 20 minute song that's about fencing in a giant airplane yeah <laughs> and that'll just be the whole that'll be bruce's whole career encapsulated that'd be awesome <laughs> And and last thing, I'll just throw this at you for the night. Best lead off track. This is this is. I got two that are right here. Ace of high. That's the yeah. high. It's got to be ace of high. high. It's yeah, gotta be. yeah. There's not even a discussion. Yeah. Where Eagles Dare is close for me, but ace is high is the one. Yeah. Oh, Eagles Pro Dare is great too. 
Prowler is really close to me. That opening yeah. guitar lick, that's such a cool song. It, it's good. It makes the hair stand up on me. Like we're fucking passionate to say why we don't. We wish we loved every fucking track. And man, I just taking charge here for a second. Everybody that's been in here tonight, man, it's fucking cool. People paying attention to three fucking ugly motherfuckers talking about Iron Maiden. And I was ugly motherfuckers and one drop dead gorgeous. And the other two guys were ugly. I was giving myself three. One for each chin. Yeah. That's why I've got this. It hides the chins. I love it. Hello. Hi. <laughs> I love this, man. This is fun as hell, dude. Everybody's respectful. Everybody in here that's watching, listening, reading, whatever the fuck they're doing. This is Friday night. I used to go drink beer and smoke pot and screw whores. This is much cooler. <laughs> <laughs> and you guys shave more than they did. <laughs> I don't know where you were farming them out at, but, you know, I whatever. Bet, right? <laughs> Harry's hammer hole. <laughs> <laughs> well, we made it through this uh, massive discography, and it was a lot of fun. King, we love you as always. We you. We're Absolutely. coming back, brother. You're gonna, uh, we're gonna get you down for kiss. So we're gonna get- do the kiss one, man. We're gonna really set some shit up for people. But <laughs> oh yeah, we talk about Vinnie Vincent. <laughs> yeah, Winnie Vincent. Winnie Vincent. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just, yeah, just a little a little snip, snippet of that, man. I went to a horror convention. I opened the door to see who was behind this room. I bumped into Vinny Vincent with his makeup on. You know, he's real crazy fucking blubbery now. He was this far from my face. It was fucking creepy as shit. He went, hey. <laughs> but, you know, I'm up for that. We, and we know Alan's not the guy to kiss it, but you know, he's not a kisser. But he'll uh, we'll he'll work somebody else in there. Yeah, we'll, we'll oh, get I've, another. I've already, got, I've already got someone in mind, to be honest. We'll, we'll get we'll get we'll get um, Alan yeah. to dress up as Eric the Fox. <laughs> uh, hey, I I did a, I did a Mean Gene Simmons uh, costume once for uh, Halloween. We got with some of my buddies. We did the whole band with the full makeup and hair and costumes. Uh, we took first prize everywhere we went that season. <laughs> we kicked ass. That was it was fun. But yeah, I I don't ha- I don't know the Kiss catalog well enough. I can I have no business hanging with you guys on that one. But yeah, we've we've got uh, some other folks that we can uh, whenever we want to do this, I'm here, dude. I love this. I love fucking chatting with people. And I do want to say when this goes to YouTube and stuff, I saw like last week when people over here when I see YouTube the next day, they're trying to ask questions sometimes to me personally. I don't see them down here unless I see them when I do, which tonight I've seen more than I ever have. So if anybody has any questions like last week a guy said I thought Black Sabbath was your favorite band. Which in 1981, when we did that one, it was. But Iron Maiden is my all-time favorite. So you can ask it on YouTube or whatever if you have anything. If not, then that's cool too, man. <laughs> can you see the, the chat on the side of the screen? I don't see a chat on the side of the screen. I oh. see I see you on the left. I see me on the right. And I see Alan below us in, in, in a triangle. Hmm. Only time okay. I see the, when you when you pull something up, the, uh, I see it at the bottom, just the thing. Like I saw Craig and I saw a lot of Ryans and I saw a few, but I don't see it all the way through on the right side. Of the you screen. might have your screen blown up all the way. You can minimize the screen and you'll see a list of chat. You can see the chat on the side of the screen. If you like hold your mouse over yeah, the, yeah. the picture. No, I know what you're saying. I, if I do it now, I may lose you, so I won't do it now. But that, when I, I did blow it up just to see you bigger. Just right yeah, I love you so. <laughs> <laughs> Talking well, you know what, everybody? Thank you so much for hanging out with us for two weeks of Iron Maiden discussion. And King, again, thank you for joining us. Thank you, Marty and Alan. Thank you both, man. It was a fucking blast. Great, and man. and it's, it's, it's always good to talk to people that want to talk about it. Nobody knows more than the other. We're all learning from each other. And that includes absolutely. everybody on the other end of the fucking spectrum. It's what it's all about. This is what this is what it's about for me. Music is this way. That's exactly yeah, right. You. you don't like what I like. Fuck you. Go home with your toys. Horse shit. Music yep. forever, man. Yep. But um, thanks. We'll be back probably not Wednesday night, but we'll be back next week. We don't have a clue yet what's going to happen, but something will be here, and we will be here. Yep. Um, yeah, we'll uh, have King on for discuss the deceased discography. He'll give us all the dirty details. <laughs> not a problem, Ryan. <laughs> <laughs> and Ryan, but, um, you were the you were the funniest guy of the night. He were that Ryan. You crushed we did it, the man. fucking brochure. Of that, that was funny. The best, the best one liner from Ryan was spend. It only, it only took thirty two years. Spend to jitsu, laugh. yes, that was uh, that spend was Spend jitsu was the best, and the brochure of the damned, or book yeah, of the, the brochure of souls. <laughs> that was fun, but yeah, let me know what's up, guys, and thanks, everybody. Cheers. Thanks, and King, don't hang up. We're gonna talk for a second. Okay. Everybody else, cheers. We'll see you next week. Take care, man. Don't hang up. No, no.
Oh, darling, darling, don't hang up.